Correctly. Well, I, Christina Pajitsky. Christina you Pajitsky. did it. It's close enough. What the fuck? Listen, you're fucking Joey Diaz. I can't. Joey Diaz is Christina. You're, Christina, yeah. Thought, but yeah. you're perfect as you were. I love how you said your mother sucks your cocks. Is yeah. that what you said in the rap? I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> you're inspired. Your ass smells like a dead yeah. cock. What? Oh. What, Lisa? Yeah, fuck it. <laughs> You don't smoke dope, right? No, I do, but I, I don't. I can't smoke socially. I get very weird. I get in my head. I like to smoke alone, and then I go on a vision quest, and I think about life. I write jokes. I'm an alone very smoker. Nice. I also drink alone. I heard that's not good. Do you drink alone? When I used to, I used to love to snort coke alone. Look at a window and jerk <laughs> off and take a shit and look at it for 10 minutes and realize what I ate the last three days and break it down. <laughs> you looked out the window. Did it make you, like, paranoid? Yeah, but it was weird. The uh, the path was very different. You know, with cocaine, it's like anything else. It tricks you at first. You have a good time. Your dick works. Everybody's happy. Yeah. You do that shit for a couple of years, and it turns into something else. Like everything else. You know, heroin, weed, everything can get yeah. dark on you. Too much anything is right. not good for you. Even Subway sandwich. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you eat five, six subs a fucking week. You'll shit, you know. God knows what'll come out of your ass. Windshield wipers or something. It some smells. Shit. That's a road dump. When you're on the road, do you, do you eat a lot of Subway? No, I used to. When I used to drive, when I used to drive uh, all over this great country of ours, I used to eat a lot of Subway, veggie and cheese. Really? Long on white. That's my all time favorite. Veggie and cheese. Yeah. With a veggie patty or just the vegetables? No, no, no. (laughs) Fuck the veggie patty. So gross. No, 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 no. Fuck that. Yeah. Piece of cheese and throw some lettuce and tomato. Like a border. Listen, I like a fucking cheese sandwich. Ain't nothing wrong with a couple pieces of fucking American cheese on white with some mayonnaise. (gasps) Okay. At twelve thirty, when you come in with a glass of iced tea with ice cubes, come on. (laughs) Who the fuck you think you're dealing with? Some fucking novice that wants? Oh, let's go to Burger King. No, bitch. Go to your house. A little salami and American cheese on white. I can't take. I don't know if I can survive this podcast. With some fucking iced tea with your feet up. Scratching your nuts, sniffing your fingers, eating that sandwich at the same time. At the time. same time? You ever eat a sandwich and scratch your fucking nuts? That, I must have. That's the shit that kings do. You understand me? Fucking kings. Presidents. Uh, whatever the fuck you call them. Uh, dictators. Cult leaders. They sit there and they eat and they scratch their nuts. That's power. Any fucking body got have some limo to drive them somewhere. Let me see you fucking eat and fucking scratch your nuts at the same time. That's- this is unbelievable. This you know, I, I love you so much, Joey. I love you too. Do you know that uh, Tom Segura, my husband and I, we have Joey-isms around the house. Just so you know, you live in our home all the time. Oh, I love you, Number one, we call we don't call quinoa quinoa. We call it quinao. Quinao. As quinoa. Joey Diaz quinoa. pronounces quinoa. it in our home. <laughs> quinao. Am I, am I saying it right? I don't know what the fuck. I don't even know. <laughs> it's quinoa, I think. Quinoa. Quinoa. <laughs> it's quinoa. quinoa in our home, thanks to Joey quinoa. Diaz. Do you like quinoa? Do you no. ever... <laughs> I think I've eaten it one time on a plane by mistake, like I was stoned. Yes. And they gave it to me on Virgin, because a vir- Virgin That's American a gives you one. shit like that. It's a good airline. They give you Quinnow and shit like that. And, yeah. And uh, whatever the fuck it is. So, the best, one of the best times I had this year was, honest to God, and there's a tape that I didn't see for months on it, where Tommy goes on Joe's show and he tells him about this plane ride we took in the Burbank um. Airport. And let me tell you something, man. Sometimes I get dark. Like, there's some days I can wake <laughs> up and I see something I don't like, and I'm in my head. You don't fucking see it, but I'm in right. my head, and I'm thinking I'm murdering people and stabbing them. Mm-hmm. And then I'm standing next to you, and I'll be narrating what's going on in my head, and I'll see things. And I was saying some stuff to your husband. I could see it in his face. <laughs> he was a little bit fucking scared. Like, he was like, what the fuck did I get myself into? Uh, and I know the incident in question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that's, that's another joyism in our home is whenever somebody g- gives you an edible, you eat, like, a fraction of it. Right. And he learned that lesson on that flight. On that flight. With oh, you. Yeah, Wasn't that the trip you guys flew in and out together? Like, on the way back, you were sitting on the same plane, too? No, we, t- we had to work together. So we had two, uh, four flights. Oh, I thought that was when you guys met on a different flight. Because you, like, you ran into him once. Right. A little while after, I ran into him. And he was going to Milwaukee. And I was going to Grand Rapids, Michigan. We were both catching connecting flights. And I bumped into him. I gave him an edible. <laughs> then the second time, we flew together. And that flight, we flew on Southwest. We had to go to uh, oh, Portland, Oregon. Oregon. Yeah. And on that flight, we were fucking gone. Like, I must have gotten three anxiety attacks. I <laughs> just kept closing my eyes and listening to Michael Schrenk, the, the fucking first well, album. Well, that's what I was going to ask you about the anxiety attack. Because I have a running level of anxiety being a comedian and not knowing the future for employment. You know, it's like an ongoing thing. And uh, I was wondering that about you. So if is, is your inner stuff all day anxiety and weird stuff and stabbing people, does the pot help you with that? 
or does it distract you from your normal Tonight thoughts? was the first time we've smoked in a long time here. Yeah. I just, uh, I didn't eat a lot of edibles this week. Like, I didn't eat edibles, and I just, was, I started smoking again. One hit here. I put a pipe outside the house now. So, you see, when I sit in front of the fucking computer, hmm. I just keep loading that motherfucking going. Right. I can't do that. So, when I get up now, no more smoking reefer in the morning. Like, I used to get up and get high. No, 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 no. So, I just go now till about 1 or 2. And after I finish jujitsu, whatever my morning's things are, then I'll smoke two hits on the balcony just to get the party started in my head. Right. And then uh, at that time, I was going through anxiety because I was on testosterone. Oh. Okay. And I was, something was going on with me where I would run out of oxygen and that would take the anxiety up. Ooh. So like I said, I went to put a seatbelt on and I would not breathe. I would, I would not breathe. And then mm. that backup of air mm. <clears throat> would give me stress. So I mm -hmm. went to see a hype, uh, whatever the fuck you call them, some people that fix your head. And she hypnotized me and said that whenever I feel that coming on, to tell myself I'm in my skin and I'm in the island of serenity and stuff like that. Now I don't have that. I do breathing exercise in the morning. That's great. With, a, with, a, with like a monitor and like I told you with the heart rate monitor. But I've been doing them for a while without the monitor. So I, you know, I still get it. Yeah, I First have time it too. When, when I go to jujitsu, when I get when I start hitting the bag, when I got in the epileptical, there's a point where something happens. And I get the skunk sweat that comes out of me. It's the first reaction to your body's working out. And I go into a panic mode. <clears throat> I can feel it. I go into panic mode. Like my body doesn't know what to do for a couple minutes. It's a transition. And I can smell the sweat. And, and it's an, it covers, it's like humidity. It covers every part of my body. I can feel it everywhere. And after I pass a certain point, boom, it goes away. But mm -hmm. for those 30 seconds, it's go home. You're going to have a heart attack. But if you die, you can't do the mm -hmm. podcast. You'll never see your daughter again. It's all these negative thoughts shooting in my head, machine gunning, machine gunning <laughs> to get out of there. Don't do it. It's the same things that happen to me before I go on stage sometimes. It's like a reverse thing where everything just comes out and tells you you're a loser. You know, you're not going to do it. You're going to yeah, bomb. You're going to hate is you. Is that? You know, there's been, I was telling Dom Herrera at the Ice House that that day at 5 o'clock, I was thinking of calling the Ice House. I caught myself <laughs> thinking about calling the Ice House and going, I'm done. And I knew that if I canceled, I'd have to quit comedy. Like, I was in that deep in my head, ladies and gentlemen. This is three fucking weeks ago. Three fucking weeks ago, I'm sitting on my couch on a Friday thinking about why the fuck did I take this weekend at the Ice House with Don Herrera? Hmm. If I cancel this, I'm going to have to quit fucking comedy because it's going to get out that I canceled at 5 o'clock. I pulled the Mitch Hedberg in Baltimore. Remember, he canceled at 5 o'clock on a Friday and shit. He canceled the whole fucking weekend, like a month before he died. A lot of people don't remember that. I don't. And the I didn't know that. the improvs were scrambling to fill the spot. 5 o'clock. Mm -mm. You got three hours till fucking Not 8 cool. o'clock. This cool. is where you get, ladies and gentlemen. When you're a comic sometimes, you know, I bet fucking, what's his name? Bacon doesn't get that. You know, he's perfect. Well, I actually wanted to talk to you guys about it. It's funny you bring it up. Uh... Like yesterday, for some reason, I had because I'm, I'm getting health insurance and it's gonna cost me about three hundred a month, and I had like this panic attack for like almost the entire day. Because you had to like, spend fucking three hundred well, a not, month. Not because the Jewism <laughs> came out. <laughs> not just that, and trust me, guys, I I bet if if you went and all the podcast producers, I probably make more than most of because a lot of people do it for like twenty five a show, something like that. So I'm I'm doing fine, but it's. It's not the money I could make if I was in an office on TV. So it's not the money I'm making here isn't enough, but it's just when I, I got that $300 a month bill. And then, like, how, how do you guys, especially when before you were headlining and actually making enough money, like, how like how did you 8,000 times not just quit? Oh, like, it's just, I, the worst. it was the entire day yesterday. When, and I, I got home from a podcast late, and I was like, oh, it's going to be okay. I have Steve Simone CD and other stuff. But it's... Like I don't know how when you're making fifteen dollars a set how you how like you oh, survive I'll, that. I'll tell you how. Look, everyone talks shit about drugs and alcohol. Sometimes they're a good thing. And <laughs> really, that, that's yes, it to drink. <laughs> absolutely, there are sometimes. You know, two thousand eight, Tom and I got married, and we were living in a one bedroom apartment in Koreatown. We were just barely feature acts. I mean, we had no money. <laughs> But you know what we did? We had enough money to go to Trader Joe's every night and buy good food and drink good wine. And we sat around and we ate prosciutto and cheese and got fat and made pecan pies, you know, every night. But some, that's some, for a span of your time, that's just the shit you got to do because you know you're going to get there. Yeah. And, and I'm, I'm like, like I said, I'm doing, like, it's not like I'm going to be homeless or anything. But 
I, I just started dating this girl and she's talking about how much money she's going to make in a couple of years because she's going to be a lawyer. And she didn't even say it to be mean to me, but I was just thinking like, God, a year ago I was making such and such and now I'm making this and I'm a thousand times happier. But like for all day yesterday, I was like, I'm going to send out job applications. I'll do the podcast in the don't, morning don't. again. Mm. And I, I just, and I, I can't imagine making $15 at the comedy store. Like we, we've all heard a lot of your stories, Joey, but it's just... Like how, like, how did you, because when you were making money at like a car dealership, I'm surprised it took you until when we, right before we met to start thinking about doing that. How did you, how do you feel on the second of the month? Me? Tell the audience how you feel on the second of the month when you're a feature act. Oh my and God. And they don't book features till a week or two before. Yeah. So it takes this courage. Yeah. Is it a courage? Balls, courage, lunacy, uh, almost it's risk taking to the point of of insanity like you're you're just but thing the alternative is worse the alternative is i go back to law school i dropped out of law school after two weeks to be a comic oh, wow so yeah. the alternative is i've been fired from 22 <coughs> jobs i was fired from or quit 22 jobs in four years before i became a comedian i didn't have any other options i fucking blew them all dude this is it what else what's joey diaz gonna do for a living besides be a comedian or an actor like seriously like our digital footprint now you can't fucking go work in an office <laughs> People, you know, hearing you say all this crazy shit on podcasts and your albums, no way. This is it. It's amazing how you feel on the second of the month. <laughs> He's back to the second. <clears throat> it's tell amazing. me, tell me. It's just the scariest fucking thing. Because you just made rent. You just made rent. Yeah. You probably have three or four, maybe hundred dollar gigs that you have to drive on the books. <sighs> Your rent is three fifty. You have to pay, let's say, five hundred for miscellaneous grocery. In my case, I had child support, a coke habit. Mm -hmm. You know, so I cut out the building. I would live on people's couches so I could snort coke. I gave up my privacy to snort coke. But back to that question: How you feel in the second? You have to wake up. It's just amazing how you think of your bills and you get scared. Yeah, yeah. for about of six minutes. Yeah. You get scared, and you, and you tell yourself, okay, so I could borrow. I got my mom. I got my uncle Tony. This guy will lend me money. It'll be okay. But then something, any, any normal human being would go. You know what? I'm gonna go look for a job. Mm. That's the question. When you say that to yourself, I'm gonna go look for a job. What do you tell yourself to make yourself believe? that this month is gonna pan out. Mm. What, did, what did you choose to tell yourself? What would you tell yourself on the fucking eighth when <laughs> you, know, you just gotta fuck it. Listen, and, and people, this is what you don't understand. We have a budget as a comedian. We have a set budget. You know, if you have a flat and you gotta buy a tire for $79, there goes your fucking budget. You're done. It's like a, an American family today. An American family has two children. Okay, I don't know what the cost is of raising two children. But the average, uh, what's the average American fucking household income for, 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 for us, maybe, for poor maybe, people? Maybe 60, 70, two fucking parents that, that have yeah. high school educations. What do they make in this Probably economy? Probably not time? even that much. No. Okay. Like maybe it's 50 between both of them. They're working at least. 50 and overtime. And the man's got to be working overtime. He might have to drive a limo on Saturday and then fucking paint the house on Sunday. <laughs> and the wife has to take care of the two kids and have a fucking job. You know, on my block, there's a Mexican daycare, which means that. We don't close. Yeah. <laughs> we don't close. There's times I'm fucking coming home at one from a gig. <clears throat> and I see a fucking mom in a car in a Mexican minivan, breed up. And I see the dad with two girls walking out of a fucking apartment building at one in the morning. What do you think I feel like? What do you think it feels like for him to have to drive home now? You got to assume the guy probably lives an hour away, 40, 30 mm. minutes away. It's one thirty. He's going to get home, put the girls down. Got to do it all over again tomorrow mm -hmm. morning. Drop these fucking kids off again. Probably like What's six. What's daycare? Yeah. What's fucking daycare cost all day? You know, a fortune. You can't. But back to this thing. What do you tell yourself as a comic? I would think of my bills, and for a minute I would go, well, maybe I'll sell coke. Mm -hmm. I can always rob this guy. But then somebody could well, listen to yourself, Joey. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be fine. And I would. That's when I would believe in God. Yeah, you have to. Have That's faith. when I would believe in God for some reason or another. What God? I don't know. The Jew God, Santeria, Jesus, Buddha. I believed in somebody. And I closed my eyes and I put it onto the universe that this is going to happen. Mm -hmm. And one night you're sitting there and it's the 22nd. Rent is due on the 1st. It always fucking is. Your same $400. 
and it's the 22nd, and you're sitting there, and you probably got 200 in a draw in a sock. <clears throat> but you want to suck some pussy this weekend. You know, you want to do some blow. You want to buy some weed. You know, so you take a chance. You take that 200 and go, fuck it. I'm rolling. <laughs> I'm rolling. I'm going to Vegas in my mind. This is going to Vegas. I'm going to go to comedy store and have a good time. And you know what? If you believe enough that Monday, the phone will ring. It'll be the it improv does. with a feature spot for mm -hmm. $500. And okay, you only get to keep 100 after rent. But it's like Mick Jagger said. You can't always get what you want, but mm -hmm. you get what you fucking need. Yeah. And I did that for damn 14, 15 years. Because mm -hmm. when I got the longest yard, all I did was that money was pay back. The money I had borrowed from Christine, 20000 over the years, <laughs> the attorneys. I got a chunk of money, but I paid shit out. And there was, uh, by the 17th week, people were reaching out already. Like the creditors were, you know, he's getting a fucking check. Yeah. So thank God, as that movie was ending, they were already grabbing me. You know, what did you do on the set? Right. Weird. Well, th that's funny you say that. You have you start to have faith. You start to go, dear God. I prayed a lot. I would lay in bed and pray and have anxiety and smoke pot to calm myself the fuck down. And then also, I'll tell you what, man. When your back is against the wall, you do shit you normally wouldn't do. Yeah. You suddenly get the courage to call people you never did before. I mean, I was calling every motherfucker in the Midwest. People didn't know who the fuck I was. I was like, my name is Christina Pajitsky. I'm, I'm on uh, Chelsea Lately, or I've been on Road Rules, whatever the fuck my credits are. Give me, give me work. I don't know you. That's okay. You're going to know me. You're going to know me. Get to know me now, because in a few years, I'm going to be a headliner. Get to know me. And I just made calls, and I fucking hustled, and it was full of anxiety, and it's hard. It's not... You know, this Oprah shit where she preaches, like, you just follow your dreams. Like, people forget there's a there's a few a years. A gap and a bridge <laughs> before the dream comes in. And when you go to the supermarket, you can't yeah. tell them, listen, yeah. I'm at that bridge gap. <laughs> Let me catch you in four years. I don't give a fuck about your dreams. Yeah. And nobody talks about that span that you're talking about right. in a second. Nobody talks about laying in bed panicking. That's what it was last night. I was like, what the fuck is going to happen? But, yeah, it's just because it's it. Like, it must be why so many people go back to jail. Like if like like Miss Pat and like other drug like when you were making money as a not a drug dealer, like when you get out and you have to work at like a, a McDonald's after a week and you get a hundred dollar check, like how do you like like <laughs> how do you expect them not to do it? When I got out of jail, I still saw blow. I went listen, when you get when you get in the halfway house Let's say you, you're leaving, right? Let's say you're getting ready to leave, and they go, where are you going? I'm going to Pazinski's house to work. Okay, give me your phone number so you have to write down a number. I fucked them up. I got a pager. I have questions for you about I got prison. a fucking pager. <laughs> yeah. So if they called me, it would be a pager. Mm. And I mm. call them something. They go, where are you? I'm at Christine You fucking lie, Pazinski's right? House. Yeah, you don't have to. And they go, okay, where's Christine Pazinski's house? 666, suck my dick street. <laughs> and they go, okay, all right, bye, click. And that's it. <laughs> I could be at least cutting a pound of coke, and they wouldn't know it. That's why... The system is loose. Those are the holes in the system. They stop furloughs and shit after some guy in Boston killed somebody. Oof. That year uh, before Clinton, mm. I think after Clinton there was a president that that was his sting to stop the furlough. I don't know what happened, so there's no more furloughs. But to make a long story short, they didn't know where I was. I could be robbing a fucking bank and going back to fucking. And what year is this that they did it that way? This or is 89-90. I, I got sentenced in 88. In fact, I got sentenced August 15th, 1988. Hey, your anniversary's coming up. Yeah, so uh, I got oh sentenced, God. and then and then those when I got out, I probably got out in February of '89 or something. So how much time did you do total? Eight months. Damn. Something and where did you where did you do your time? Colorado, in Colorado, at a place called. First, I I went to Boulder County Jail, then they took me to uh, this jail up in the mountains in, in uh, at like a ski resort. Which was a what? fucking party. You went to like a white person in jail. No, no, no. But this is when you're waiting to go to, uh, you're still in the county system. Oh, I see. You're okay. waiting to go to the prison to be... system. The beds are overcrowded, so you gotcha. have to go to, Boulder was packed, so they sent me to Summit County Jail. Mm. They, you could give the guards money at night. They go to A.M.P. for you, bring you back potato chips. Oh. The TV stayed on until three. You put your feet up, eat your little wise potatoes. <laughs> yeah. you so I was there for about a month, and then they shipped me to D.O.C. That's Department of Corrections, where you go through diagnostic for two weeks. Then after they get everything, they ship you to the destination. I ended up at a place called Camp George West in Golden, Colorado. It was an old army barracks. And now I've been watching Orange is the New Black. I don't know shit about prison. I, I watch Lock Up a lot. 
Um, did you have to side with your race? Did you have to like go with? I mean, did you did you identify white or Latino? No. What did you do? I squirmed my way through it. Don't ask me how the fuck I did it. It wasn't the big gang place at that time. It was 1988, guys. It wasn't a big like Mexican yeah. gang place. There were Mexican guys, and they called themselves something, but everybody <laughs> did business with each other, you know. The fucking mayates, the blacks hang out at some place. The fucking browns hang out at another corner. The pecker woods, as they call white people. The pecker boys? Pecker woods. Oh, pecker woods. Pecker yes, woods is this. what they call yes. white people in sure. prison. Sure. Jews is like three of them. <laughs> and they sit under a tree. <laughs> <laughs> Negotiating this shit. Tree. Negotiating. And then you have white, uh, pecker woods, white. And then you have, you know, yeah. Mexicans, you have the, the whatever. And then you have a couple of Aryan guys. Hmm. But they... They were very cool. We had a guy named Tramp that was a motorcycle guy that was in there for murder. And he was a big Aryan guy, but he got along with the black guys. You have to. You have to get along. Th you know, that, that's great. Now we're all in this fucking thing together, you know. Yeah, and do you think it, I mean, obviously <clears throat> it's changed since then. Like, do, I don't know changed if you know. Changed a lot. Changed a yeah. lot. The system has changed. You know, you, you could smoke in, in any of those places. You can't smoke no more. So as soon as you go to That's prison, fucked up. you're smoking. Is I, I don't know about prison. I'm not sure about prison, uh -huh. but I'm sure about the county jail systems. You cannot smoke in county jails. That's I know you cannot crazy. smoke in Boulder. And in Boulder, they used to give you free cigarettes. They would give you the the grouping, or the top, whatever, the ones that you roll yeah. yourself for the hippies. Wait, so how how did you get drugs in prison? Like, did someone put up their butt and sneak it in, or how do they get how do they get There's drugs in prison? There's all different ways, like. At the, at the place where I was in, the chick would stick a balloon with heroin or crank in her mouth. And when she would make out with the guy, he would swallow it. And then they'd all wait for three days until he shit it out. And then they'd take it out of this shit and they'd shoot it. Well, did you hear about the guy who just got caught at LAX? No. Oh, it was a gay porn star. He was here for like, he was stupid. He was here for like three days with no luggage. So when he was flying back to, I think it was Australia or London, it was, it was a virgin flight. He was acting all fidgety. And he ended up having half a pound of meth in his asshole. <laughs> in three there, different balloons. There's got to be a better way. Right, Joey? There's a better way to smuggle meth than putting it in your asshole. Federal Express. I say it once, <laughs> I say it again. People do it every fucking day. Right. Oh. Federal Express, UPS. They're the, not looking. Shit. Meth? Fuck no. Send it to a fake ad. You know, the way you send that shit is to, <laughs> to Lee's house under a different name. Right. Yeah, you know, um, and, you, and you do it just right. You, so I would send it to Lee's house under Joe Banana's name, and Lee would take it in and then put it on. The cops are still going to go to your house on watch. Oh, uh, okay. They know it's in there, so they'll go to your house on watch to see if you keep it. Yeah, we but accept if you it. take it and then just put it in the garbage and watch the garbage for an hour or two, make sure no little kids go over there, and then when everybody disappears, go back and grab it. And now you know for sure. Sorry, say this part again. So the cops watch you. Let's and say if, you if they know there's the meth. If, you, if they see it in the package. This shit that comes to my house every fucking day that belongs to somebody else sure, who lived there before. Sure. You understand me? So the sender's sending it from somewhere else. Right. And the guy at Lee's house is Pete Holmes. I'm just using the name. Pete Holmes. He's a porno guy, right? In the yeah. 70s. Yeah. Pete Holmes. Uh, boom. Fucking Lee Syatt's house. So I don't accept the package. You don't yeah. accept it. You don't even know that. It just gotcha. comes. You get home from work and it's sitting in front of your house. Gotcha. And you look at it with the rest Toss of your it. luggage and you don't know. You walk in, leave it on the table for a little while, just in case the cops are outside. Gotcha. Oh, and then put it and put it on your thing. You know how when you put mail back on your thing, leave yeah. it up there for a few hours. If the cops don't come get it now, you know you got yourself three pounds of fucking meth or whatever the fuck they. Have. UPS and all that other shit's probably scarier. You know, there's got to be dogs yeah. at these fucking places. Got to be dogs at these fucking places. I'm just, yeah. just you know. That's I'm, why, I, I, when I went home after the first year of working with you, you gave me a couple edibles, and you said just pack it, and I got too scared to put it under in the x-ray on, like, with the check bags, so I had it in my backpack. But now they're doing, like, second TSA checks, like, they'll bring a little cart to the front. There's a fuck. Oh, I was so scared. already popped by the time no, they what, get there. No, see, I didn't pop so, anything. I popped that motherfucker <laughs> on the sky. Listen, when I go through, when I was in uh, San Jose, uh, what's his name? Gave me a, a Chiba Chew. Butch? Butch gave me a, a 70 milligram Chiba Chew and I put it in my pocket. And when I got up the next morning, I was cleaning out my pants and put my shorts on and it was in there and I just put it in my pocket. At the fucking airport on the security line, I realized I got a Chiba Chew in my pocket. I just put it in the thing. Just next to my shoes with the fucking phone and the shoes and I wait for it to go by and I took my Chiba Chew and blasted it when I ate breakfast. <laughs> uh -huh. Now, I also heard, I knew a girl that would put weed in, in her cooch, not in her cooch, but like in her underwear, 
right under yeah, your yeah, cooch. cooch. That's a good place to put it. Like there's like a pocket sometimes in women's underwear, and that's like a really right. Good place. That's a great place. To yeah, because who's gonna really search? And you take your... a little blood and you put it on there. So even if they do take your pants off, you know what I'm saying? You put a little fucking blood in that snatch. <laughs> and that shit is good to go. Ain't nobody going to touch that little wounded bat. You know there you go. Now, I also have another question. White Lightning. Did you ever drink any prison hooch? No. White Lightning or Pruno, as they call it? They no. Were, a couple guys made it, but no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see you drinking that. I did heroin in prison. I yeah. did crack, like meth, like two or three times. With this white dude, Clark, from Philadelphia. <laughs> that a big motherfucker. Tough. Not muscle. He was big. Like, he was muscular at one time. But when I met him, he was like 34. I had to be like 28. And he dug me. He was from Philly. He had freckles and shit. He was Irish. And his chick would come in. That's who would shit the meth out. Uh-huh. So I would walk by his room and see him and his crony, like, waiting for the meth. Like, you know, this is the end of the world. But I was slick. I used to... Visitation is Saturdays and Sundays. I didn't want visitation on Sunday. I wanted to get my dick sucked. Mm. So I took visitation on Mondays and Tuesdays. So I had this huge room all to myself. Ah. And I'd make my girlfriend come in with a skirt with no undies on. So I could eat that fucking monkey right there at the visitation table. And there was, and I would sit under the window. So there would be a guard outside your door with a window. So I would uh. make her sit on my face and look out the window to make sure the guard <laughs> wasn't looking. Who the fuck you think you're dealing with, Lisa? Yeah. That's Mondays crazy. and Tuesdays, she was allowed to bring food. So they would go through the food and see what was in there, and then they'd give it to me. Huh. And then there was a Crip kid that was a badass Crip. His name was Torrey Piles. And I became friends with him. I loved him. I loved him. I was also in prison with the Kersey sisters from the 80s. They won the Olympics and shit. The Kersey joiner. Really? She had a brother. I was locked up with him. He was a big motherfucker, too. I still remember his face. I still remember a lot of those guys. I had a lot of good... I had got a lot of good laughs in there. I was scared when I went in there. Not physically scared, but inside of you, you have to have doubts and you have to have a little fear. If, if not, you're not fucking normal. Yeah. People goes, I wasn't scared, whatever. I had a little bit of fear, but I didn't show it. Yeah. You know, I was really good at not showing it, so I, I did okay. But I, I got a got. I didn't. I had a lot better time than I thought I was gonna have. Is what I'm trying to say. I really did. That's so interesting because <clears throat> I, I think I, that's my greatest fear is going to prison. I'm very afraid of that and being alone and uh, with your thoughts and and also, um, do the prison guards mess with you? They're assholes, right? Like they're out to get you, kind of. It's stuff. a psychological beatdown. Prison yeah. is not, a, you know, only in the movies where they put Lee in a fucking thing with murders. You know what I'm saying? Right. In real life, you get categorized. They're not gonna put white collar crime with fucking uh, crips and gang fucking bangers. You know, I was a kidnapper. I got accused of kidnapping and I got, and I pleaded to second degree burglary and accessory to a felony. What's that felony? Kidnapping. My attorney weaved through it and it got it non-violent. Nice. Kidnapping is as violent as it fucking comes. My attorney hired a a public investigator to get it non-violent. And we Fuck. came up with facts from different people. So he went to different people that I grew up with. And they asked him different stories. So he never get into a fight. His temper. But, but we had to fly the guy out to Jersey. He asked people questions. You know how those fucking people are. <laughs> they don't want to answer nothing. They don't know nothing. I had to call him up eight times. If the guy comes to your house, let him in. Nobody will let the fucking guy in. You know, so it, it was just a... Uh, so that's only in the movies. So you're with people that are also nerds that, you know, they're in there for getting drunk and running somebody over. By mistake, right. you know, which DUIs. can happen to anybody. It can happen to it's anybody. Really not that I was crazy. in there with a kid that I remember still his face and how scared he was every day. He was Aww. petrified, and his parents would come see him every Saturday and Sunday, and they were petrified. And at the end of the visit, the whole family would cry, and the sister would cry, and, and it was so sad because this would never happen to them. This was like, you know. Like, they, they never dreamed of this. You no. can tell these yeah. were nice white people. Right. They were the Waltons. <laughs> you know, this shouldn't happen. And the kid told you. The kid goes, I never drank. I went to a f- 
party, whatever the fuck those things are. Yeah. And they made him do the fucking beers, and he got oh. in the car without nothing. Boom. And he hit some fucking guy on a bicycle in Colorado Springs. Oh. Bam. Eight God years. Could have an end eight of years of your fucking life. Oh. Just like that, you dumb fuck. For having a cocktail. It could happen for anything. With anything. I know. Anything. Tonight on the way home. You, you can't see nothing. I can't fucking see at night. And these jerk offs come out with a fucking bicycle. <laughs> the bicycle ones make the me crazy. The bicycle make me fucking crazy. Are you out of your mind? Those you're... are the biggest ball people yes. in the world. Yeah. And to ride a bicycle in this fucking neighborhood. In listen, LA? When I see three Asians in the neighborhood, I ain't riding no fucking bicycle behind cars. <laughs> and, I don't, and I love you. I'm not saying nothing bad, but you don't want to ride a bike around fucking Asians. I told Lee my sure. story the other day when the Asian drove me off the fucking cliff in Boulder, yeah. and the teacher ripped this thing up. You can't even write that shit. And the Chinese kid's sitting there all fucking confused. <laughs> So Wait, why so is that your biggest fear, prison? You're a nice person. Oh, I won't, I won't go to prison. I have a, my stepfather. My mother remarried to a man that was a criminal. And, um, you know, we got a lot of money real quick, and then all the money disappeared. By my senior year in high school, the IRS took it away. I just, I think, uh, it scares me to think, because I'll get, like, pounded and stuff. Like, I'm, I'm just afraid of getting beaten up. Like, you, you didn't see fights or anything? Like, those people aren't psychos that beat the shit out of each other for no reason? That kind of stuff scares me. You know what? I got into a couple fights, you know, and I got beat up one time. I didn't get beat up, but I got put in an uncompromising position, and we broke it up. And me and the guy were friends. It was just a misunderstanding. He had a bad temper. I had a bad temper. I stepped on a chair, and he pushed me. You know, you follow me? So as I went to die for him, there was a counter there, and I slipped, and he had me against the counter. He could have hit me. I had his shoulders, but it didn't. So in my world, he still could have beat the fuck out of me. You yeah. So I got this the same like biker that I shit in his box and put in his drawer. Yeah. I okay. finally got him one day in the weightlifting room. I got this guy. I got this fucking guy. You know, this you hit him with the, a weight or something? No, I grabbed him by his hair. That's oh. why I, I, if I was a man, I would never have long hair. Never, it's if bad. I, I, the first thing I go for is an earring. Yes. After 30, oh. I would go for a fucking earring because I'm not a tough guy. And I got to shock you. I got to get in and out. My mentality is to get in and out of there. Mm -hmm. I rip your fucking earring off of your gold chain. I grab your gold chain. I twist that motherfucker around <laughs> till it breaks or you're fucking breathing for air oh turning purple. God. I don't give a fuck. So I took this yeah. guy. I was in the way. And this guy used to always bust my balls. He used to make little remarks to me whenever he was around his little uh, biker buddies. And one day we got into a conversation about the hot album when I was in prison. There was three hot albums. What's fact, that? We're, we're going to laugh. I want you to play... Uh, well, yeah, let me finish this story. Uh, I used to, and I'll do an impersonation for you. You'll love this shit. Uh, this kid was a biker kid. One day we're having a conversation. Clark was a biker. The kid that gave me the speed was a big ass bike with brown hair, big motherfucker, good looking dude. And he was my entry into that thing. Nobody fucked with me because I knew Clark from Philly. But he didn't like me. There was like two dudes that looked at me kind of weird. They always made Italian remarks, they made stupid remarks at me. But this guy, one day, we're talking about Mr. Brownstone. Mr. Brownstone, unless you're a fucking moron, it's about fucking heroin, okay? Mr. Brownstone won't fucking leave me alone. It's about fucking heroin. This idiot and his buddy tried to be cute. Like, tried to pull, like, they tried to be like comedians. You know how when you yeah. do a podcast with comedians? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. They try to be it's cute. The so, so you took it in the ass. And you, yeah, and that's stupid. He was trying to be cute. So I first shit in the box. <laughs> I took the shit. No, that's not the song. I took uh -huh. the shit and I shit in the box and I fucking put it in his drawer. And after about a month, he found it. <laughs> this was like a 22 inch shit when I put it in his box. It was really? A, it was a cheese box, welfare cheese. They uh -huh. said that's what you eat in prison. Uh -huh. They just slice and tell you it's American cheese. I took the cheese out. I took a shit. And I had to fit it in the box and I took a, a flag that we put in BLT's, American flag. There you go. And I put it in the piece of shit and I put the oh. lid on it and put it in his drawer. And this motherfucker didn't find it for like four weeks. He finally found it, and he was like going crazy. Somebody shit my thing, and I, and I thought I, that would satisfy me with him, but it didn't. And I knew I wanted to, I wanted to jack this motherfucker. He did. Uh, so I had like a month left in there. I knew I had gotten my uh, reconsideration. So you were on your way out. You knew this is your out. last chance. Yeah. But I didn't. If you know anything about Joe Diaz, this guy <laughs> was not getting away with this. I knew <laughs> something. I was either going to steal his radio. <laughs> something, his jacket, something was going to go down. <laughs> and I'm in the weight room, and the weight room was slash a combination weight room, laundry room. Mm -hmm. So he was in there doing laundry. You could pitch your laundry in for the weekly thing that don't cost you nothing. Or if you prefer to do laundry on your own, they had two machines in there. You could go in there. So I'm lifting, and he's talking shit to me. 
and it's just me and him, and there ain't no cameras. Oh. And I asked him, what happened? And he goes, D -d -d -d. you know, he's one of those guys. You know those dudes that smoke a cigarette and they laugh when they smoke? Like, the, the, like he liked, like, that fucking song I can't stand. The boys are back in town. I hate like, that, that fucking was, song. I fucking too. hate that song. It makes song. me so angry. Because if you're a guy and you Fuck sit around off. with your buddies, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. shoot yourself tonight. <laughs> Don't even let the podcast finish. Those fucking morons. You know which ones I'm talking about? Yeah. The boys are back in town. Uh. And they sit and look at each other like, we're the boys. <laughs> yeah. And meanwhile, there's nobody sitting by them. They got no strippers. They got no drugs. <laughs> they're nerds. They got no jobs. They're they got fucking, nothing. They're nerds. But they're those guys in high school that were cool. Yeah. And the one guy, and he would always smoke a cigarette, and he'd go. <laughs> <laughs> you know, those jerk balls. Uh. And, and he said something, and I'm like, and I went up to him as, as, as peaceful. Like, my, I tried to really work on my body energy and my face. I didn't want it to get red because then he would know I was going to mm -hmm. fucking knock him out. But I didn't even do that. I walked up to him slowly. Like I had to ask him a question. What'd you say? No, nah, no. Nah. And I fucking grabbed both his hairs. He had long hair coming down. And I had done that before. And I remember that. I loved that movie. And I grabbed his hair, but I got oh, That's how you do right it. Right away. And I, I saw him. And I yeah, pulled him down, do and it. he was wide open. Mm -hmm. By the time he grabbed my fucking wrist, it was just uppercuts. Bam, bam, and then, but here's what I did even better. I got him and I punched him. He grabbed my wrist, so I had nowhere to go. So I put his hand around his fucking ears. <laughs> and I banged his head again. There was a bulletin board, you know, Christian meeting, 8 o'clock yeah. in the library. I banged his fucking head. Ha, 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 you <laughs> motherfucker. And I, everything that I had gotten in, like every rage that I had. And when I finished, I could say his eyes were all fucked up. Somebody came in, what's going on in there? And that was it. He never even spoke to me till I got out of there that much. And he went back and reported to the commissioner, but the commissioner was Clark. So uh, the commissioner said, yeah, you goofed on him. What the fuck? I'm not going to go after him because he, fuck it, you got fucked up. And I'll handle it. He wasn't going to handle it. I rocked this fucking world. He had never seen somebody grab your fucking head and mm. cup your ears and bang your fucking head against the door. That's Juan Puerro type shit. Don't be cruel. By Bobby That's Brown. a good mood. Oh, I love that song. That's funny, Bobby Brown. I used to get into fights with black girls, and they would always sing this shit in the... Let me tell you something. Great, in I, I seventh always, grade. I know that. I said this on the Bert Kreischer podcast, that, or with Felicia and Bert Kreischer, that you don't know what... People go, well, what's prison like? I go, you don't know what black people like that you go to prison. Like, people oh, think people, scary. black people yell in the movie theater. Don't go to prison. I bet. Because they don't shut the fuck up all <laughs> night long. Yo, Torrell. But right here, move that from the this beginning. This is what my bully used to sing to me. Okay, so Bobby there would be four. Oh. There would be four black guys: Etchy, Antoine Spencer, aka Chicken. Chicken. There would be Graveyard, this other badass nigga, right? Badass niggas, right? And Torrey Powell. Put it from the beginning. I didn't. And they'd be, put it from the beginning, from all the way, from, and they'd be like playing cards. Yeah, nigga. Yeah. And all of a sudden, this would come on, and the fucking it was like African man. <laughs> they would just start fucking going nuts and shit. Four black guys, 16 yams watching, and I would not be the only white dude there. Yeah, yeah, I'd be fucking loving off the energy. They'd be hugging me and shit. Cuba dance, but there's a part, fast forward it. How much? Uh, like three, four minutes when he goes into, when this goes. Yeah, when this yeah, just the goes. Rap part, yeah. When the just rap, rap, the rap part. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah, right here. Yeah, Thank yeah. that. They would lose their minds. I mean, you know, Brown, they would never be loved. They have never been found. I gave you my mind, but a true yes. love affair you would never find. Oh shit! But there's a guy's life out there that won't say no. Yeah. And so I want you, funny. Jackie. What? And the fucking yums would just be going crazy. And I would sit there and go, to be with me, Bobby B, or with a bad attitude, I can't compete. Now you know my name. Now you know my game. You want to be with me? You look going to be the same. What? 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 Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, shit. So good. Can I tell you, when I was in public school fighting with black girls, this album came out that same year. 88, 88. And I was in seventh oh, grade. Oh, my God. And she would sing every little step. This bitch, Rosina Johnson, who used to fuck me up. And what I learned from the Mexican girls, that hair move that you're talking about, that's what the Cholas did. I grew up That's here in the money. San Fernando Valley. That's a money move. And I would watch the Cholas. They they pull some girls. I saw them pull a fucking braid clear off a girl's scalp. That's how you do it. You fucking wrap it, and then you pull the bitch's head down, and then you punch her head. Oh my That's how you do it. Now, I didn't do that. I just defended myself. I tried to fight this black bitch, but she was big, dude. She was way bigger than me, and she would punch me in the stomach, and I could just, you know, I just flailed. I just swung, but they're brutal, dude. She was brutal.
Now, to get back to Christina's question. Go ahead. When we got to talking about being on the podcast, Christina asked me if I said the word nigger and got away with it. And we discussed it. Yes. So, did you see how excited I got when I said nigger? You did. I, there ain't a black person in America that's insulted right now. That's right. Because they know. I'm not lying. When 88, when this album came out, and Bobby Brown, that whole, that before that part, there's a part where it's not him singing, and they're just going nuts. They would, I never saw it. <laughs> it was like, you know when you see the Zulus going up and down like that? That's yeah. what it was, only 200 years later. Or whatever the fuck the I'm Zulus. I'm sure you already have like five tweets, though, from angry white people. Fuck them. <laughs> fuck them. Right away, they want to say. My dick, all right. If black people don't get mad, mind your fucking business. If you like black people so much, go suck a black cock. How's that, cocksuckers? <laughs> Put that in your fucking stupid fucking activist sensitivity fucking act. You well, dumb fucks. I love black people, and the reason why I said that, the answer yes, Christine's yes, question. Yes, we talked about not how, It's not what you say; it's how you, how say, you say it, ladies it. and gentlemen. Yeah. I didn't say nothing bad about them. They know they would jump up. Graveyard <laughs> had a big afro, and he would jump up and down with a big chest to be with me. But he would look like he would fucking like he was like the Zulu guy. It was tremendous, tremendous, was a tremendous experience. Yeah, and I do. I I talk about getting into fights with this girl Rosina on stage all the time, and black people love it the most. They come up to me after, and they're like, "Girl, you crazy? I love it. like they love that shit. They love that shit. They but, know it. Yeah, it's funny because the the end bomb people are so sensitive. Very about sensitive. The word. But I, yeah, but you're right. It is context, and I don't think that you and I like. There's no hate behind your story. When, you, when about I told that. you why I got away with it, what did I say? Tell them. Because you have no, you have no hate in your heart no. about it. I said because I'm a nigga. Oh, because that too. <laughs> I got no hate in my heart, it. and I'm a fucking nigga myself. So they know it. You know it at home. If you're black, you're watching me going, yeah, you got problems. <laughs> <laughs> you got problems, dog. So what's up, Lisa? I can see your eyes high, are starting yeah. to close. I can see you over there. I caught you dreaming about a cold cut sub from from Subway well, on 12 I, inches. I think when that Green Hornet melted, it got stronger. Yes, it did. That was a beautiful Green Hornet. Oh. The fucking Green Hornet Gumi Man melted in my in the 104 degree weather today. Oh shit! I ate one when I went to meet my wife for coffee, <laughs> and the other one melted. I get in the car; it's liquid. I'm like, "Oh, Lee's gonna be Fuck. pissed." It's Wednesday night. I went home. My wife put it in the freezer for Uncle Joey. Nice. That shit tripled in intensity. Nice. I'm fucking high too. Oh. oh, now to the I wish guilt. I have to drive. To That's right down the street. But it's funny you said, like, when you're talking about anyone could, like, hit somebody when they're drunk. I got drunk for the first time last week, and luckily I walked to the bar. But I used to. You, you have to. You got mad at me once when you, you have people to. thought I was driving drunk. Oh, my God. And, I called and, you fucking yelling and screaming. And I, was, I wasn't. <laughs> but, um, yeah, like, I, 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 I drove a couple times drunk. And driving high gets a little bit nerve wracking, but it's that's terrible driving. It's drunk. a paranoia. I don't like driving high either. Mm -mm. That's why I'm on the bicycle time. <laughs> no, you're not. Yes, I am. I don't know. I'm going to Ha Ha. What, am I, what do I need? The Ha is three blocks away. What the fuck am I need a car for? Are you in there tonight? Yeah, After I'm this? Do a set. Yeah. Why not? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to go do a set, go home. Uh, I got to go swimming tomorrow with the baby. That's adorable. 10 o'clock. Then I'm going to go to Jiu Jitsu at 12 30. And then I'm going to fucking smoke dope and watch Marin. Hey, yo. Tomorrow night, And the car picks me up at 8. I'm shooting the fucking <laughs> Reno like a doctor. Okay. Fuck him. Okay. That's exciting, your Marin episode. So, what's that? Tell, have you talked about that a lot already? I don't want to reiterate. No, we haven't. Was... I mean, you said you were on it, but then you, don't, you obviously can't tell the story yet. No, I don't want to tell the storyline. Then they'd say, you Joy, you're a spoiler alert motherfucker. You know <laughs> Just make sure you watch it. Tomorrow night at 7 fucking o'clock. On IFC. Pacific, whatever, on IFC. I was very fortunate. You know, he had me on the podcast, and uh, the executive producer heard it and said, I want to write something for you, do your thing, and they booked me. Oh, it's he so was great. very real. And it was great because it was a fellow comedian that came through from A to Z. Mm -hmm. And two guys have done that for me, besides Joe, uh, mm -hmm. Louis C.K., mm -hmm. and my man, fucking uh, Mark Maron. So I'm very fortunate. So what? Comedy Central don't like me. So what? Fucking oh, they don't like me either. The don't worry about don't it. don't like me. So what? Anybody don't fucking like me. You know what? All you need is three, four people you get through in this mm -hmm. fucking life. The rest can of I, them suck you. Can I bit. tell you? You're right about that. Because not everybody likes me. There, uh, there's, there's certain festivals that won't have me for years. There's clubs that will never have me. The, the point of the story is, I was thinking about you. I think about you a lot, actually. And why Tom and I both just love you. It's because... You don't give a fuck. And in this era of comedians, I feel like the, the corporatization of comedy has destroyed it completely. And you're of that generation, like you're, you remind me of the Sam Kinison era, of that fucking golden age where people just said shit and, and there wasn't, there was no holding back. Like I feel like you're, it's so good what you do 
and it's so awesome. I'm a student of how I grew up. I grew up watching Sanford and Son in the seventh grade. Me too, that's the best show. I grew up watching Chico and the Man. If you watch the honeymooners, you'll go, Joey Diaz is stealing everything from fucking... Oh, right, uh, sure. From Jackie Gleason. But I love Norton. I think Norton is the comedy genius in that. Jackie Gleason is the padding. Norton has fucking specific fucking timing. I watched the episode two days ago. I'm still laughing. I've probably seen the episode 110 times. He gets a letter that if his, his tongue's turning blue, he's got this disease. <laughs> so he tells Norton, and Norton goes, why don't you sell your fucking story to a magazine? So they go to the magazine, he tells the story, he gets home, he tells his wife, his wife goes, no, that was the dog. The dog is going <laughs> to die. Um. But he wanted to leave money for Alice. So that's why he sold the story, $50,000. So now he died, Alice would have money. Mm. What a beautiful fucking thing. This mm -hmm. is This is two white writers in the room, two Jews that didn't get enough sun. That's how he <laughs> described them in his book. There were two Jews that didn't get enough sun in him. And this is what they wrote every fucking day, Jackie Gleason. That's why I admire him. Listen, man, he's my, one of my guys. John Candy's my main motherfucker. But he comes in because of his work ethic. So he writes his thing, he goes home, and they tell him, if you're lying, if you don't die, we're going to fucking kill you. We're going to take you to jail and all this. We're going to take you to prison and lock you in there for 20 years. So when he finds out he's not dying, he goes to Norton, and he goes, Norton, i got to go in there tomorrow and give him the money back. And tell him I got a problem. And he goes, what, you, what, what, what am I going to do? He goes, why don't you go in there and tell him that a doctor called you and you, you don't have monochromia and you're going to live and give him the check back. And he goes, all right. He goes, who am I going to find to play the doctor? And Norton, he goes, Norton, would you play the doctor? Mm -hmm. And Norton's like, don't touch me, I'm sterile. So that's where it starts. It goes to commercial. The next time you come back, you see both of them in the office and Norton's got a goggle on. What's that shit, a monocle? Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's got a monocle on with a, do a thing and... The guy comes over and around, how you doing this doctor, whatever, from whatever. And he goes, uh, here's the check and the thing. I found out I'm not dying. He's going to cure me. Thank you for the opportunity. He goes, wait. He goes, just like that. He goes, well, why don't we do a story on the doctor? And, and he's like, no, no. He's very shy. And then Norton goes, a few pictures would hurt. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> so you know, funny. that's how. That, but he, he, timing, his timing. Christina, he goes, Dr. Norton, what college did you go to? No, he goes, what school did you attend? And Norton looks at Ralph and he goes, PS 86, Oyster Bay. And he goes, no, what medical school? Like, right? yeah. What fucking medical school? And Ralph goes, Oxford. And he goes, in England? And Norton goes, oh, is that where it is? <laughs> I mean, that's little fucking nudges that. So it was, that's what I grew up watching, Christine. So that's yeah. my mindset. I also grew up that you're a man. I grew up watching men. I grew up watching the Jerry Lewis roast, whatever, the <laughs> D. Martin roast. That's the Where shit, you were allowed man. to drink. Yeah. While you were roasting people and getting fucked up. Mm -hmm. Fucked up. Dean Martin would get fucked up. Mm -hmm. Okay, these were men. And they acted like men. And it was a different thing. You know, it was just a different brotherhood. It was a, it was one for all. These guys did everything together. I feel now where we're against each other. Oh, I that's feel now that even when you see these comedians, you know they don't fucking like you. No, I what hate that. What do you think, I'm a fucking idiot? I know when somebody likes me. I know when somebody don't like me. I know when you're eyeballing me. Mm -hmm. I know when you're giving me the fucking evil eye. You know, I ain't that fucking retarded. You know? Well, because so. it's all business. I think everybody's so invo involved in the business that they've forgotten what the fun of it is. Just to go to the club, let your dick hang out, try new jokes, fuck with each other in the back of the room. That's what it is to be a comic. And you know what really kills me? What you're saying about this old school drinking, smoking... I grew up watching Johnny Carson, who's the fucking G.O.D. of The Tonight Show. Not this pussy, uh, dog shit. Uh, uh, Fallon. Who's not even a fucking comic. Are you kidding me? This guy? Well, he does a good job. I know, but I can't he's watch. Do, he's I, doing a good I, job I can't for watch. I can't watch. It's not the shit we grew that's up right. on. That's right. And that's why I can't. Fucking, I can't. When Carson, fucking Joan can't Rivers was hosting oh, one day. For, and fucking Vanity was there. The chick Vanity and she was dating oh, Prince. Oh, yeah, yeah, I love She was dating Prince and Joan was ripping into her on <laughs> national television. That's how you doing. Like, you know, you're dating Prince. You know, he <laughs> makes Michael Jackson look like a green beret. I mean, she was <laughs> going all on him. You know, and Freddie Prince was going to take off for Johnny Carson, a Puerto Rican. If Freddie Prince wouldn't have shot himself, he would have taken off for Johnny oh, Carson. That'd be cool. History would have been completely fucking different. Nobody remembers that shit. Then Jay Leno came in. I remember he when Jay used to host. They hated And when he hosted. But that, that, listen, that's what it became. When it was, when it was, uh, listen, you could meet people. Like, you meet people. 
but they're not your friends. Right. I mean, I met LL Cool J. I worked with LL Cool J for two fucking days. We laughed from bell to bell both days. I didn't go up to him and take his number. He didn't take mine. I shook his hand and I went my way and he went his fucking yeah. way. When you watch The Tonight Show with, what's his name? Carson. Carson. It was like he had a relationship. Yeah. Everybody that came on. Now sometimes you watch Lionel. You're like, who's this fucking 18-year-old girl? Carson would have never put that bitch on. No. Well, how long? Carson, Carson did it for a while, that. right? Didn't he do it for like yeah. decades? Carson would have never put that woman on. And and I watched it. There's a great documentary about Johnny Carson on Netflix. I highly yeah, advise it. This motherfucker was on TV from the beginning of television. Like, literally, they invented TV in his small town, and I forget where he's from in the Somewhere middle in the of Midwest, nowhere. Yeah. Nebraska. Nebra- yeah, really? So I think I so. Look it up. I, think, I think so. Yeah, and he's like, I'm going to go on this thing called television. And then he comes to L.A. and he gets on The Tonight Show. They give him his show. So he's in, way back in the day this motherfucker started. And, uh, yeah, I know what you're saying. There was a genuineness, I think, to Iowa. people. Iowa. Um, because there wasn't a lot to gain from other people like there is now, maybe? I don't know. Maybe there's... It just seemed like it was a more genuine thing, a more de- a genuine time or something. When I got off the blow, the, the, <laughs> the mission statement of my recovery in the back of my head, I'm not talking to you people like an AA guy. I'm talking to you people how I looked at my recovery was the most important thing in my recovery was getting my manhood back. That cocaine, I had a dick, and I had a cock, and I would still smack in the face, but I didn't have my manhood. Mm. I didn't have the balls to tell somebody no. I didn't Mm. have the balls to tell this white powder no. So my mission when I got recovered, like the first 30 days of my mission was to get my manhood back, and I knew it would take me a year. And when I mean with my manhood was what the addiction took away, the shit I ate in Hollywood, because I was scared that they wouldn't book me again, or I was scared that I would go to jail and not be able to do my little precious cocaine. When I took that away, my manhood came back, who I was when I was 12 and 13, when I was fucking nuts, do you understand me? When Bruce Lee died, the anger I had in my fucking heart was tremendous, do you understand me? (laughs) And then my mother died, you know, so this built up, but I went back to cocoa, I went back to just cocoa, you know, regular cocoa. That's what I wanted to go back to, and this is why I know good things have happened to me since 2007, I got married, I had the child, but most important, I got my balls back. Mm. You know, I don't give a fuck about work anymore. I don't give a fuck about your TV prints. I don't give a fuck about anything. Number one, you better talk to me like a man and respect me like a man, and I'll respect you the same. And I'm going to fucking own up to it. And that, what, that's the number one problem that you're trying to describe. You don't know what to put your men on. We're dealing with a bunch of fucking cunts. Mm. We're dealing with guys pussies. and fucking pussies. Yeah, and I agree. you people at home should be ashamed of yourself because you buy into this. You buy into these fake people. Yeah. They're fucking fake. Eighty percent of those people are fake. When you hear them talking, it's something somebody else heard, yeah. and they're just saying it to be cooler than the next guy. So you to go, oh my god, he really likes puppies. This guy <laughs> would give his fucking girlfriend chlamydia up the fucking ass. Uh, but you're at home thinking, oh my god, he's so sweet. You fucking jerk offs. Half of these fucking people that you see, and that's who we're missing. We're yes. missing that manhood. I agree. We're missing that manhood. I could fucking, on this hand, I could tell you, yeah, there's a thousand comics. And yeah, oh my God, he's so. There's five fucking men out there doing comedy. Men. Men. <laughs> men. The rest of them are fucking children fucking around. But there's men. And that's what you people, that's what you're missing. Yeah. That's what I miss. That's why you see me with three people, two people all the mm-hmm. time. Because I miss men. I miss men. You know, we're comedians, but before we're fucking comedians, we're fucking men. And, you know, when, when you are a female comic, you have to, for a female to succeed in comedy, when she feels her ovaries kicking in, <laughs> she's got to grab her balls. I do. All the okay? time. I and, let my and nuts And a lot of women in. don't are home going, Joey, Jesus Christ, look at all the female comedy careers. Yeah, that's It's true. when they become a woman that it's all over. Yeah. It's all over. Once they become a woman, I, my wife just became a woman. There's girls that do comedy. But once they become a woman, it's hard to convince a woman to do fucking comedy. What do you Did mean you know by that? Wait, wait. Do you mean that they become mothers or they become feminine? Their life changes. They see a life experience. They see the same thing I saw at 44. Yeah. All you dummies are fucking kids. I'm a man. I've been a man for 10 years, but I didn't even know. I didn't wake up into this. And, you know, every woman takes a break. Mm. Except Joan Rivers. But they all take some type of break or, you know, something. 
to and that break is and I'm not saying all of them but I'm saying a majority of them just disappear yeah and and the reason why they don't disappear is because you become a woman and it's very hard it's like me I have a child I do a podcast twice a week at six one day at six when I fly out I fly out early you could only do so much when you're a kid you say yes to everything, right or wrong? Yeah, yeah. Lee, come over. Yeah. Let's snort heroin and light your ass all on fire. Yeah. One day you're like, whoa, I'm not fucking driving over there. Yeah. yeah. It's over. Once you see it for what yeah, it is, yeah, 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 once yeah. you see behind the curtain, that's what it is to become a man, to become a woman. You can't put one over on me no more. Yeah. You understand? It's over. Society, it's over. Life, you're done. <laughs> that's it. I ain't taking shit no more. That's why the yeah, who made that I song. Agree, yeah, I agree. There's a part in your life where you go, that's it. You're done. I've seen it for what it is now. Yeah, me too. And then you see it again when you're 50. Then you see it again when you're 56. Then you see it again when you're 61. The longevity of it, you see the field more. Yeah. That's all it is. We're seeing the playing field more. Yeah, I Who's agree. a good quarterback? A good quarterback is somebody who sees the fucking field. Yeah. Right. If you see a bad quarterback, he only sees 30%, 40%. You got to know what everybody's fucking doing. And that's, once you see that, I think that, well, that's what happened to me. You know, I did something. I went off on somebody one night that I'm still, people still get mad at me. A lot of industry people don't talk to me about. But that was the first movement to me to become a man. I stuck up for myself. Mm -hmm. You don't know how many, how many times have people talked to you weird in this town? Like every day. I had a meeting with a, an executive last week where the guy was on his phone the entire time when I was talking, pulled out dick pics in the meeting. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, yeah. Now, if they do that six years from now, yeah. you might just reach over and smack that motherfucker <laughs> and eyeball him till he takes him in and tell him to put the phone and work him. Work him, put the phone down before I shove it up your fucking ass. <laughs> you took me out to this fucking meeting to waste my fucking time. And, oh the other two, and the other two Gentiles at the table, they'll be frozen. You know why? <laughs> yeah. Because nobody ever did that in this town. And mm -hmm. when people do that, right away you think your career is over. Your career is never over. Ask Cat Williams. Do an HBO special with Spike Lee. So you could call the whole fucking, the whole audience a bunch of fucks. You know, you don't see the rest of the comics doing that shit. Ain't nobody else doing what he's fucking doing. Yeah. And he gets arrested every other week. <laughs> so what does that tell you? What does that tell you? People buy the image. Can I tell you one thing you said to me at a barbecue at Bert's house a while back? You were like, uh, just say no. See what that feels like. Just say no. And I did. I took your advice, <clears throat> and I decided to make an increase in how much I make doing stand-up and what I will do and I won't do. And I, and I just remember you, and I just said no. I said no three times, and then I got what I wanted. And I thought, wow, wow, the power of no. I had no idea that it was as simple as going, yeah, no, nah, I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. I will go work at Starbucks before I'm going to do yeah, that. Yeah, no, no, no. Tell your mother to go. What you saying? That's what you got to tell these people. <laughs> tell your and mother. And then I know. That's, a, that's, a, that's know. my own line. I know. That's my, oh, my God. I have this thing for you. Oh, my God. Listen, they're doing this thing on Sunday the 18th up in a park in San Francisco. A bunch of marijuana. We want you and Lee to come up and do a podcast. It's going to be 80,000 people. We're not going to pay. And we're not going to pay. Fuck and I'm you. like, no, no, they were going to pay like 300, no, no. plane ticket and a hotel no. for us. And all the weed you could smoke. Well, listen, we take <laughs> one hit and we're good to go. No. And all the Chibo chews. And I'm like, no. And they couldn't believe it. They couldn't. Well, what do you mean, though? No. We really don't understand what's going on. We've called Death Squad and people. No, no, no. We see it for what it is. We're not going up there and doing your festival. Your festival's doing us. And you're paying us. Mm -hmm. Those 80,000 people are going to pay each a quarter to fucking see us. Because mm -hmm. we deserve it. We get up early. We do podcasts. We twit. We, we communicate. Yeah, this is what the fuck we work. do. It's this work. is hard work on our yeah. fucking end. You know, I'm not doing shit. You know, I got a call this morning from the improv. He was calling for something else. That was what he called for, for something else. Let me tell you how it works, people, okay? The improv is a phenomenal chain. They're our backbone, they're our whatever, but they have little kinks in their game. They're also corporate, like anything else. Everything everything else is corporate, and you gotta do certain things, but they can't explain what they do. They can't explain why they pay Christine yeah. a certain amount, yeah. and why they pay somebody who's at a certain management company a certain right. amount, which right. is double than what Christine's getting, right. because it's their client. So these are all the things that you people don't know about behind the scenes, I'm giving them to you right now. And if you're a woman, by the way, they will try to fuck you a thousand oh, times. And I know what my times. husband gets. And then I go, no, no, motherfuckers. I know what he's getting to do that. And we have the same podcast. Go fuck yourself, of course. Sorry, go ahead. Very yeah. fucking weird. So you people are hearing this shit. For <clears> the <throat> so what they'll do is they'll pay you some money for a while. <laughs> God forbid there's a holiday 
or just what they try to do, they look for you to fuck up so they can offer you less and justify why you did less. Mm -hmm. Well, that Wednesday you did at the Irvine, oh, we don't know. You only mm -hmm. had 180 people. Listen, when you do, do it for this price, sell tickets and then and you're like, no. And they can't, they can't. Somebody else will go, okay, you know, and there's a thousand. The reason why we don't have no balls, we don't have any power on our end, is because there's 1,800 suck asses. That'll yeah. do it for we'll, nothing. We'll do it for nothing and eat the guy's asshole out and clean the bathroom and whatever. I work from strength. I put 20 years of my life into this. The same way a plumber or an electrician puts 20 years. I want, I'm getting to me, you know what I'm saying? That, that's it. The game is over. So this motherfucker calls me for something. And in the meanwhile, he goes, hey, I spoke to your agent. And we want to give you Irvine Sunday, mm -hmm. August 3rd. Listen, mm -hmm. at 7 o'clock on a Sunday at Good Irvine. Good luck. Yeah. Good luck. And they know this. It's going to happen. He's like, you know, he said to me, it's brand new. People want to come see it. Not on Sunday. Not on Sunday, no. <laughs> no. Well, I understand. I understand. First of all, I got a family. I got to leave my house at dinner time. Mm -mm. To go do your fucking show on the show. Lord's Day too. On the Lord's Day, no. is that like why like UFC fighters turn down fights? Because the only thing good there was nothing good gonna come from you doing Irvine on Sunday. So mm -hmm. like when they when they gave John Jones a, a, like a chail, I think he turned down right. Yeah, and like like there's nothing good gonna come what out of it. What move am I gonna make here? This is no. a business, right. this is, and people at home got mad. Well, fucking, well, he's a pussy. He won't fight Chael. Really? Who's the Chael's got a two year suspension? John Jones about to fight Dan fucking Cormier. This is a business. You guys thought this was too far going jumping up and down. No. This is a guy that's got people around him that before he makes a decision, when you call my house now for a gig, if you call me and I'm on the road, I'll tell you, call me back Monday. Well, I need to know by tomorrow, Monday, then we can't do it. Okay, I'll call you back Monday. <laughs> you couldn't do it. Yeah. And when he calls me in my house, I'm the fucking thing. I have a list that I ask. So they can't swindle me no more. They can't catch me off guard, whatever. I have a certain list that I look at, and it's a countdown. And if they follow the whole list, everything's good, then I book the fucking gig. Right. It happens with regular jobs, too. <coughs> One of the last TV jobs I got called for was a night job. And they say that you're going to work six days, but you never work six days. No, you never, no. And never have, it never happens. You can leave early. And, oh, it's only 1200 And yeah, I know you should be getting 15 but we only have 12 And... It feels so. It felt so good to turn it down, but it's. It, that's why. I, like, there should. Be, I like. That's why I'm a little bit pro union. I'm. I don't really know it, but I kind of wish there was a union that I could join, because it kills. Like, I'm sure. I'm sure plumbers listening get really pissed off when a new plumber comes in and does the job for fifty. When if they did it for two hundred with the good guy, it'd be done, and the fifty guy's gonna break it and ruin it, and now everyone hates plumbers. It just. It. Like that sort of lowballing really pisses me off. Well, here's the deal for a union to be. Uh, uh, I had a great experience with a union growing up because you ever work union? Are you right? I'm in. I mean, I'm in AFTRA. Does right, that right. even count? No, these fucking much. <laughs> this is the union. They don't do shit for you, but no, no, you, just give them money. you just give them money. It's a That's racket. It. Yeah. I joined the union. My first union was the warehouse workers union. You pay like eight hundred to get in. They give you a book. They give you benefits, dental, vision. I'm lying to you. I was in the electrician's unit. And to the electrician's union in Jersey through a back door like a stock clerk type. I was like a 25 fucking unions. All right. And they always give you benefits, blah, 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 for a while. Then, but before that, I got into the warehouse one. And that was the best one I ever worked with because they got fired. And I got fired for wrongful termination. So I went to pick up my check. I hadn't seen the shop steward. I saw the shop steward. He's like, where you been? I said, well, they fired me. You didn't know that? He goes, nobody fucking told me. How long have you been fired? I go, three weeks. He goes, they're supposed to notify me in 36 hours. Let's see what the fuck's going Why'd you get fired? I, go, I got sick. Mm -hmm. And I went home to change my shirt. I couldn't find the supervisor. And when I tried to get back in, they wouldn't answer the phone because the, the switchboard was closed. He goes, I can't fire you for that. He goes, come on, let's follow. He made, we filed the report. Yeah, I was out of work like four weeks. Filed the report. Oh, Jesus. A week later, he calls me. Come on down. Let's go to a fucking thing, a hearing. I won. I ended up getting on my back pay, sixteen dollars an hour. I was a senior in high school. I Great. worked for ten days after that, and they went on. I got laid off because in the winter you get laid off when you load right. trucks, so you collect unemployment. So I was doing. I collected unemployment all the way to May, and in my senior year in high school, because of Mass Back Century, when they called me back and they offered me the job back, I told them to shut up their ass. Now I'm slinging pills and coke and robbing houses. <laughs> I need your fucking eight hundred a week for. I'm and, making that an hour. And that's the thing is that if you say no to the shit that you don't like, eventually the stuff you do like does come. 
But if you don't say no, the stuff you won't do, the stuff you will do doesn't have room to come in. Yeah. You know? Did you start in L.A. comedy? I did. I grew up here, so I did, yeah. Because the only thing, like with me, my first job, I had a shitty boss. And no matter, like I couldn't, I'm glad I left because whenever you, I feel like whenever you go somewhere, they always view you as like the first time they saw you. Yeah. So like I couldn't move up in that, in that company because I started out as, as a PA. Yeah. Like did you run into that in L.A.? Like they saw you as an open micer, so now they're... <laughs> um, N- no, here's the thing. I did, I did the open mics here, but I didn't, I didn't step foot into the clubs, into the Laugh Factory, the Improv, or the store until I was at least seven years. Deep. Oh, okay, so they might not have seen you. I knew that if I, f- if they got a bad first impression, You're it's done. very hard to undo it. So I would drive an hour south. I would go to this shit box called Martini Blues every Friday, every Saturday. Because that guy was a bit of a, you know, creepo. He liked pretty girls, and he put me up. And I, you know, I actually owe that guy, you know. And um, I just did, I did a lot of spots out of town. Okay. I did triple runs. I did all the shitty things. And then when I was ready, I stepped foot in the, in the, in the clubs here. Yeah, because you don't want to, you don't want to, once you taint that first impression, it's right. so hard. What made you get on stage the first time? The first time? Uh, um... You know, I did the Groundlings first when I was 23 because I had a boss who was like, you're a horrible worker. <laughs> he goes, you're the worst employee I've ever had, but you're really funny. You should try uh, improv. And I go, yeah, all right. So I did the Groundlings, and I remember fucking being in the room, and they're like, oh, you're in a donut shop. You're making, do your space work. And I was like, fuck this. Fuck, this. fuck yeah. you. Fuck paying $400 for some jagoff to tell me how to be funny. Like, I, I, I knew I had some shit to say. And then I uh, I did the the belly room for the first time and I I loved it I just I shit all day though I had diarrhea from the time I woke up you know when you first start doing stand up and you're like oh I just gotta shit I would shit all day I shit until the moment I would get on stage for the first four years I just shit all <laughs> fucking day That's your anxiety and your nerves yeah and then I saw this interview with Adam Sandler and he said he had the same thing he's like yeah I just I just one day I, got, I just knew that if I persisted it would stop and I go well if that fucking guy can do it I can keep doing it and then I just did but I, I really like the push pull of it I like the danger of it it's everything you're not supposed to do it goes against your self preservation it's just and, and to, for a woman to do it it's very subversive if you're saying something if you're really you know because it's, it's very male you're, you're taking a fucking cock in your hand and you're telling a room full of people what's up. You're grabbing your nuts like Joey Diaz and you're smelling your hand. And that's a very masculine thing. And I, I really love that because I'm very inside. I'm wired a little bit like a dude, you know, but at home with my husband, I'm a woman. That's a different story. I, I like to cook for him. I'm very domestic, but not, not yeah. Our home life is different, but I just, I love something about the power of it. And, uh, and jokes, I love fucking. I love talking about shitting and farting and everything taboos. That's why I love when you say that you know you drop n bombs on your podcast. It makes me laugh. I love that stuff. That's that's how my dad was joking. We're immigrants. We're Euro trash. We're Eastern Europeans. That's all we do is talk shit about everybody. This was very normal in my house. Women are not. My my mother is a very ballsy woman. She's not the way American women are. It's, it's amazing when yeah. you said those words because a lot of women get offended when I say that. What I said earlier about that, there comes a time when a, when a girl is doing stand-up that she becomes a woman and then she sees the whole thing and they, a lot of women are like, what are you talking about? You know, women get offended no matter what the fuck you say, but you know this feeling that yeah. you have to sling a little dick yeah. when you're a woman to really survive in a male-oriented environment. I see Most women definitely. in rooms, and they have to leave everything at the door. There's an, there's a, an acting coach here in town, Ivana Chubbuck. Oh, yeah. She's I'm, very high-end. I hear that, yeah. yeah. She's very high-end. And the reason why she's high-end is she had a, a Charlize Theron, and she had the black chick. Halle Berry? Halle Berry, back-to-back. Back. They won Oscars, and both those bitches thanked. Mm. Because what she does is, first week in class, she makes you get naked. To, to go against your grain. Let me tell you something. You don't know what life is. You have to get naked <laughs> in front of 24 fucking pretty people in an acting class. Or do a scene naked in a bed with a I chick. I can't imagine. He's married. I got to get in the bed with Christine with my dick out and put rub it on her leg and she's fucking married. <laughs> and you got to act. Uh, so they want you to control. This is why. They take you over the fucking top. If you could talk to somebody you're not married to when to keep your fucking heart on 
and act? Are you fucking kidding me? Breaks you down, huh? Breaks you down. Yeah. And as a woman to do stand up, let me tell you something. Yeah. It breaks you down as a man to do stand up. Yeah. Because I talk about subjects now, 22 years later, that I didn't talk about five years in. I would not even discuss it. There is no way I would tell those stories I tell on stage. Yeah. There was no way. I would have been a fucking star in my second year, and if I told a story about Lucy Stallbush and fucking mugging right. the hooker and lighting her wig on fire, I would not repeat those things. That was something that happened a long, 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 long time ago that was done by a person named Coco. Right, but um, you can talk no, about no, it now. No, I can talk about it. You're a family guy, yeah. But it's not that I'm a family guy. It's that I took that, that spine you build by getting on mm. stage. Mm. You build it by getting on stage. I, I've been in jiu-jitsu for 16 months now. I was lost till two weeks ago mm -hmm. because now I know the steps. It's like comedy. First eight months you're doing comedy, you're a jack off. Yeah. First year you're doing comedy, you're a jack off. You don't know what's going on. Mm -hmm. In your head, you think you're fucking, you know. <laughs> uh, I know, I fucking, thought I was brilliant. Uh, you know, Kim Kardashian in your fucking yeah, head, but yeah. in reality, you suck. Yeah. And then second year, you start to get the basics. Third year, you're on the road, you, they throw you into some fire. You know, now you're starting to get a little bit. You don't know dick, six, seven. I came here, I won't, like, I came here in my seventh year and I was still green. Of course. I just got away with murder because of my... Personality? No. Stage mm. presence. My stage presence was very confident, so it always deceived you. Mm. So you would watch me for three minutes and go, this guy ain't got no fucking material, this is horrible. But my stage presence is six years in, was overlapping still on my material. It still is till today. It's my stage presence that makes the thing go around. My, they don't even know what the fuck I'm saying. They don't even give a fuck. But don't you find, I find that the best comedians it is about, it is about the audience wanting to spend time with Joey. It's not about the cleverness. At least I've never loved guys that have clever fucking jokes. I know Mitch Hedberg, you mentioned him. I get it. I know why people loved him. I get it. But to me, it doesn't tickle my cooch. You know, it doesn't like grab me by the nuts. Unless you're, tell, tell me the truth, motherfucker. And when a man doesn't talk about his dick on stage, I think he's full of shit. I don't fucking trust a guy that doesn't talk about jerking off or sex or anything. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you know those comics that just talk about like, well, the cookies and I got cookie. And you're like, what the fuck are you talking about? Why don't you talk about why you're so dark? There's a reason you're on stage. There's a reason something's wrong with you, right? Don't don't give me this like like Seinfeld. I know I see everyone's supposed to bow down, but I, I just it didn't I didn't get it. I didn't get it. I got Seinfeld and I understood where he was coming from. Was he the comic I looked at to emulate when I got into comedy? No, but I right. got him. But I understand. I that got I know him. Why. And I liked him. I liked right. him. I, I paid to see Seinfeld. Really? He was he took this fucking hot Korean chick. But it makes me mad because I'm like, tell me the, tr tell me how you really feel. I want to know your dirty secrets. I want to know who you are. I wouldn't talk about cocaine on stage until I got to the comedy store. Seven years in, yeah, was where I got my legs to talk about cocaine. That's a good place to start with that. Yeah, the that's where I talked stuff. about cocaine on stage the first time was at the comedy store. You don't have those legs in the very beginning. No. To, to, and then you got on real world. So what happened was I did that in college, 1999. Or ninety, sorry, no. Where was college? Ninety eight. I went. I barely got into school at the University of San Francisco. No, I don't. Yeah, don't you know it? Yeah. yeah. And I fucking I got into school barely by the skin of my teeth. I didn't. I barely got an eight, like an eight hundred on the SAT. And I get in. I study philosophy. Anyway, I did a year abroad in England, and I came back, and I was desperate to get the fuck out of the country again. And I saw a flyer for the real world, like come audition for this show. And I ended up getting, I mean, you just keep coming back and back and they interview and interview you. And then, uh, <laughs> and they, they're like, we want you to do road rules instead. And I was like, do I get to travel? Great. Cause I was living in a closet in San Francisco with like five other roommates. I was so broke. I had no money and I just want to get the fuck out and travel. And I, here's a secret to getting on a reality show. If anybody's listening, this is, this is the fucking ultimate secret. In your final interview, you have to cry. You fucking have to cry. And I knew it because they brought in the psychologist lady and she was like, tell me, tell me about your mother. And you don't like your mom. You don't tell me about your sister. It did math and this and that. And I was like, oh, this bitch wants me to cry. And I fucking totally did. I just started crying. I was like, oh, I'm on the road rules now. And then I, and then I got it and it was great. And I took a semester off of college to do the show. We went to Australia for two months 
And it was innocent. It was an innocent time for reality shows. It's not like it is now where these fucking assholes are lighting themselves on fire and, you know, for a fucking free bicycle. Like, they asked me to do a challenge when I was 28 or something. I'm like, why would I? I can buy things now. I don't need to fucking uh, light myself on fire. They still do that show. I I I didn't realize it. it. Which one? I hate it. It's a challenge. It's with all the people from real, real world. And I used to watch it when I was in middle school and high school because it's been on for like 20-something years. Yeah. Close to that. And there's these people who do like physical challenges. Oh, my God. Like there's a guy, CT, from Boston. When I grew up in Boston, I thought he was the coolest guy ever. I find out like ten, like now, like 10 years later, that he's still doing these ridiculous events to yeah. win like $20,000. Yeah. It's just it doesn't have the same spirit of the show because there's this woman, Mary Ellis Bunham of Bunham Murray. Who, yeah. Who was the creator of the show and she came from a soap opera background so she would cast people that were really interesting and dynamic and actually had lives and then they would you know come together but then they just started cat when she passed away john murray just hired like a bunch of hot <clears throat> retards like it was always like we're just gonna hook up in the hot tub and get wasted and that's i think why the shows got worse and worse like i don't even watch the real world is it on anymore i i, I don't know that I and I loved yeah. it. And I watched it for... I love reality shows. Like, I still... I fucking watch the worst shows. I love them. Yeah. But it really bums me out. They're voting people off and all that mean-spirited shit. That's not... Uh, that's not how it started. I only watched the real world a year. The kid had AIDS. The Cuban <laughs> kid. 93, Pedro. 94, Pedro. Yeah. And then the chick was cute and she started dating Puck. Yeah. Puck, I know Puck. I know Puck. He's I met crazy. him out here at the comedy store. Yeah. yeah. But that chick was banging. I had a crush yeah. on that little innocent-looking bitch. From Arizona, she was like from Spain. Oh yeah, I remember that. She, remember, she hated Puck, and then they ended up fucking. And That's always was, how it is. Everybody was pissed off at Puck for <laughs> fucking her. This chick was innocent, but I bet that that chick was hot. That's the only year I watched. I don't watch reality shows. I, I watched Duck Dynasty three or four episodes. I like when they fucking uh, ate dinner at the end and said a prayer. Yeah, it's like the Waltons. Yeah, yeah I like the Waltons. I, I like, like the old guy, the dad, the mm-hmm. one that hates gay people. <laughs> You know, as a uh, as anti PC as that is, like that's that's who that guy is. That's like, who you're he not is. gonna fucking change an old dude. What do you care if he hates <clears throat> gays? You don't have to watch him. Who cares? What do you care? You know, you're a fat fuck. Guy. We love we love those fucking shows about food. Yeah. Oh, I love that you know, stuff that dude, too. The diners, dives, that motherfucker. You could watch him for two hours sitting <laughs> yeah. there. He just got fired, right? Did and really? Is that Richmond? Oh, no, 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 no. The guy for you. No, they're putting Richmond's. They're putting Richmond's show on NBC. Oh. What? Yeah, they're putting it on. They don't wow. fuck. He didn't say nothing wrong, though. That's just fucking people that are sensitive. See, and that's the going back to the, the Carson era, the time when people could just fucking say what they really felt about stuff. There was no Twitter, though, to crucify them over it. You know what I mean? I'm sure Johnny Carson called people cunts left and right. It's it's really amazing how sensitive people are. and I'm surprised any like athlete is allowed to have Twitter. Like it just, it, there's always a scandal every couple months, and it just happened yesterday with an old coach. I'm surprised any of them do it. Like it's just so easy to piss someone off mm-hmm. in 140 characters. That's scary, dude. Let me give some shout outs real quick. Yeah. Get this fucking party started yeah. here. You know what I'm saying? Okay. All right, my man, man, Nick Pompa, Neo Savage, Vix Berg, Jesse Wright, my girl, Joey Rooklyn, looking bad at a motherfucker, John Shaw, <laughs> John Keats. And Chris Cruz, I love you, motherfuckers. That's it. Where's the music? Well, you don't who are these music? people? Are these your listeners? These are people who fucking uh, send me shit on Aww. Twitter or Facebook after That's I nice. post. These people shouts out. They support yeah. your yes. show. Yes, most definitely. Makes them feel nice. Okay. okay. <laughs> oh, shit. Isn't this Big Daddy Kane? <laughs> hey, my husband just met you him. No, this is raw, right? Okay. Oh, shit. Okay. Oh, shit. Goalie. Goalie, wiggly, goalie, 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 goalie. It's a Wednesday night, bitches. What the fuck you want? What are you doing? What are you going to do? Watch TV? Sit there and fucking pet the dog like a fucking half a bag? Fuck it. It's Wednesday night. You're up. You're late. Who gives a fuck about work tomorrow? You're getting paid Friday, not Thursday. Fuck him in the ass. What? Fuck him in the ass. Constantine Rain, you're fucking up, cocksucker. You're lucky I love you over there in Germany with those fucking neo-Nazis you're running with. <laughs> so we got Christine, whatever your fucking last name is. Pajitzi, yeah. This, uh, this edible's kicking in. Oh. 
fucking hot. Do you want to put the air on for two sure. minutes? What the fuck? Put the air on for two minutes. Who gives a shit? So you're in Ontario, California this week? Ontario, yeah. Ontario, California at the Ontario Improv this week. They actually got my husband and I to do a week together, which is very rare. So if you want to see Tom Segura and myself do jokes. This whole weekend? Uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Good the Thursday you. show's not there for some reason. No. Which is fine with me. Who goes up first? You go up there and Now everyone asks that. You go up there and throw some heat in front of your husband and fuck his world up. I'll tell you what. Make him stutter a little I, bit. I think what we're going <laughs> to do, I think we're going to flip a coin. I think that's the best way to do it so nobody gets weird. What do you well, think? Well, it's five shows. Split it down the middle and flip a coin for who gets the, the third show the headline. Okay. So just go to pick them and just go, we'll flip a coin for... Well, for Sunday. Sunday. Yeah. Sunday sucks, yeah. Sunday. Uh, that's the one that bothers me. Me Sunday. too. It's it is the Lord's day. You should be. It irritates the shit on me. If I'm home, I don't mind working on Terry. He's fucking gonna drive eighty miles. But yeah. Sunday is the day that it just irritates the fuck out of me because I don't want to fly Monday morning. It's the worst. Dude. The last thing you ever want to do in this lifetime is fly Monday morning. Monday mornings are just confusion. You know, Monday and Tuesday morning is still fucked up. Did they blow up the World Trade Center on a Tuesday? Mm. Probably, yeah, I think so. Mondays and Tuesdays. <laughs> I don't like it. I had a drug dealer friend. He used to always go, don't, no hagan algo más que te complica. That means don't do shit on Tuesday because you complicate yourself. When That's I was a kid, true. in 83, he told me that quote. So I would never make a move on a Tuesday. Okay. I would always say, I'm coming to pick the coke up. Oh. And I'll, go, I'll be there tomorrow, not on Tuesday. You won't. I don't do deals on Tuesdays. Can I? Can we ask you? I've been dying to ask you this step. How much more time do we have? I don't know if we want to. We don't give a fuck. Okay. Do it. What? 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 <laughs> what was your childhood like? Like, who the hell? Who is Joey <coughs> Diaz? Where did you come from? How are you like this? Uh, to be a really good comic, to do anything in your life, you have to have a point of you don't give a fuck. Yeah. You don't give a fuck. This was not who I was when I was 12. I was very anal. My family was like this. My mother was a very, I don't give a fuck situation. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like my mom would buy a, a first class ticket on a plane and she took a bottle out and mix her own drinks. And if you look at <laughs> it, she'd go, bitch, my money's as green as yours. Get the fuck around, turn around, mind <laughs> your fucking business. And you would, I would sit there looking straight ahead in this chair. I, I mean, she caused problems everywhere, but that was her mentality. She was a spick. Yeah. This is my fucking money. Fuck you. You know, don't look at me. Right away, they want to judge. Everyone wants to fucking judge you, you know? No, what's her? Was she an immigrant or? Yeah, she was an immigrant. So okay. that mentality was in my house growing up. I just didn't appreciate it. Yeah. I didn't like it. I didn't care for it. Yeah. I did everything I, I could to run away from the guanimo mentality of men. The possession, the jealousy, the, uh, the control. I st I'm still semi-controlling, but that other shit that comes with it, I don't, I erase that. I still have the rage. It's in my blood. That fucking Cuban, that Spanish blood mm. is still in your, in your heart, you know? So what I did was when my mother died, I, I had a do-or-die situation. How old were you when she passed? 15, 16. Uh, so I had a do-or-die situation, mm. okay? It was a sink or swim situation. Either my attitude was gonna change Five years ago, I told you it was when I became a man. No, it wasn't. I was very, it was when I became a scared little boy. Yeah. You know, that's why I got into drugs. That's why I stole. That's why I sold drugs. That's why I did 10 million bad things at that age for like six or seven years until I finally got arrested. And I did a bunch of bad more shit after I get, came out. I just paid my sins and, you know, I cut a deal and that was it. You know, I cut a deal with myself. But I met this family, the Runnies. And Mike Runny is a guy I still talk to. I talk to him Saturday. And he was pissed off because he had to drive. He had to work Saturday night, and he was a manager at a fucking whatever. But it was weird. His mentality was like I was raised, and he was one of the only person in his house that had that. I don't give a fuck mentality. Say one more word, and I'll put you through that fucking wall. Fuck him tomorrow. Go down in the morning and be the best you can. You know he had that craziness, and that's what took over. And I lost that for a while. Rogan always discusses that when he first met me, I wasn't funny. He goes, you were the last thing but funny. Really? And he goes, and then one day the fucking switch turned on. And it was the day that I knew I wasn't going to Montreal. Mm. Mm. I knew I wasn't going to get APA or CAA or Three Arts to go. Oh, my God. He's brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. Brilliant. <laughs> I knew all these things. Yeah. You know, the Laugh Factory didn't make me a regular. Yeah. It was just, you know, I didn't get invited to a lot of things, so I knew 
what my demeanor was. So I said, if you're not going to like me, I might as well do this my motherfucking way. Yep. And that I did that for a while. Like I st- even though I was coked up and I was a little scared, moments of balls would come out. Like when I got the longest yard, when I sent the envelope in for Spider-Man 2, when I told the guy on the hardest commercial to go fuck himself because there was no brake on the truck and he thought it was me and he yelled at me. And I told him, don't fucking yell at me, cocksucker. And the whole crew stopped because he was like an international director. You don't say that shit to me. That was 2009. And those were the things that I was like, that's it. This Hollywood shit is ending now. Like, after I went off on Jeff Valdez at that Marilyn Martinez's, that was it. When I walked to my car, I remember looking at Dice and Johnny Sanchez's face as I walked out the comedy store, and they saw something. And I'm like, that's the guy I used to be. Mm. That's the guy I want to come back. I was raised with a mentality that my little daughter is smacking. For some reason, she's at that age. She pets the cats, and they become smacks. The other day, she kept twisting my face at the park, and I had to yell at her. And today, she hit my wife, and my wife didn't say nothing, and I attacked it. That's the idea. That's the Valdez mentality. My mentality is stop these motherfuckers the way they should have stopped Hitler in Munich. Right. If they would have stopped Hitler in Munich, if I say to you, hey, hey uh, Christine, your tits are banging today. Right. If you don't say, listen, you spit fat motherfucker, right, go fuck how about yourself. I go fuck your dick up in the ass? Yeah, and yeah. How about I call your fucking wife, you fat motherfucker? If yeah. you don't say that, <laughs> if you don't say that, yeah. you're done. I'm going to eat you alive. Because you got to push back you on alive in this society. Yeah, in know. today's society, if you're a woman, this is what I'm going to teach my wife, my daughter. This is what my wife knows. At the, uh, you know, when I was a kid, I dated this girl, and she was kind of a fucking whore. But she had good pussy. I ate her pussy. She sucked tremendous dick. She let me put coke rocks in her ass. And this was way back in 84. People were just starting to put coke rocks in people's assholes. And she let me pioneer that fantasy I had just to see the coke rock melt in your assholes tremendously. <laughs> it's like a fucking, when you put a spoon in a, when you put a drug in a spoon, you put that lighter on there, it just dissolves. Same way, because the pussy's moist. Once that cocaine hits it. Is that good for her? Does she get high? I'm assuming That don't do it with me. I don't give yeah. a fuck about her. I want some on my yeah. tongue. I okay. want to help people. I ate some coke with fucking there rocks on it. You know what I'm saying? Well, yeah. What was my point? Anybody know my point? Oh, being oh, a woman with your daughter. Grabbing your nuts. So, the point being that uh, I was with her at a bar one night in 1980, in summer, like July of 83, 84, like 30 years ago, we were at a bar one night, and I went to the bathroom to do a bump. And when I came back, there was a dude that dripped from head to toe with booze on him, like saying, you're crazy. And she's like, next time I tell you the seat is taken, go fuck yourself. You follow me? That was a girl from the neighborhood. When I went to the bathroom, some guy thought he was cute and tried to sit down next to him. She told him, no, the guy didn't care. She threw his fucking drink in his face. That's his turn. That's old school wow. shit. I moved here with Carol. Dirty fucking horse tripper. I took it down to the improv. I get up to go to the bathroom. I come back. Jackie Flynn sitting next to her. And they're talking. Jackie, get up. That's the first time I met Jackie Flynn. Get up. What? You don't know. Don't make me get this fucking chair and hit you with it eight fucking times. <laughs> That was my first meeting ever with like Jackie Flynn when he was, they all ran together. White, Steve White, they were all managed by that same manager at the Improv, 1997. I shouldn't have had to say that to that fucking guy. Do you follow what I'm saying? Right, yeah. A real woman, that's a woman. That girl in Jersey, I was 21 at the time, and she threw the glass at the fucking dude, that's a woman. Don't say anything. But now in society, oh my God, is that my new phone? What the fuck? What the I fuck know. are you talking about? The other day it happened at Marie ETC. We were sitting there, some, that creepy dude that's always there, making believe he's a writer. Yeah. Some chick came with a book, mm-hmm. and she fucking, she, read, she took it out, and the guy's like, what book are you reading? That's Gentile shit. That's Sherman Oaks type shit. <laughs> yeah. What that book is, are you reading? That is Gentile and, shit. And she looked at him, dog, and she went, does it matter? <laughs> you understand me? Yeah, that's yeah. abroad. I don't know. What are you doing? Uh, it shakes me and then the guy kicks up and comes oh, up I read it one. get the fuck out of here you know what I learned I, I just did this uh, show with Marlon Wayans on, it's called Funniest Wins on TBS and I hung out with a lot of black people filming it and I learned who was telling me one of the black comics this dude was like white girls are so different than black girls because a black woman won't fucking talk to you if she's not really interested in you you know what I'm saying? Like, a white woman will talk to you even if she's not interested in you sexually. A uh, black girl won't even, woman will be like, get the fuck out of my face. And I'm like, God, I 
I kind of like that. I think I should adopt that. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty much dismissive in public of other people, you know, just because I don't want dudes talking to me. But I really like that. I really respect that. You know what I'm saying? I really guys have to act like that. That's how we act like as a man. Yeah. I pull you aside. I don't have to be a fucking gorilla. I go, Lee, do me a favor. You ever say that to me again? I'm going to smack you in the face. And then I put my hand out. And we shake hands. And we have an understanding. Yeah. And if you want to be cute again, I'm going to smack you in the fucking mouth. Now, now you know. I warned you. That's how I grew up. I grew up with guys that go, can I talk to you for a second? Listen, before you made that comment. The next time that happens, we're going to box as men, okay? And you look, I couldn't believe a man would say that to me. It's crazy. And he puts his hand on, you put your hand on. Now we know where we fucking stand. That's the school of mine I'm from. Say that to, say that to one of these fucking faggot Gentiles <laughs> in Hollywood. At the fucking at the parlor with Jay Davis. <laughs> say one to one of these fucking faggy fucking comics that, you know. Uh, hipsters. Uh, hipsters, you Alternative. know. Alternative. That, and that's how men talk. Yeah. I that's agree. how men talk. I have my sights on a few comics that when I see them, I'm going to pull him aside and go, can I talk to you for a second? There was a certain day I saw you, but there was people there, and you made that remark. What did you mean by that? I've always been a gentleman to you. It insulted me. Did you, are you trying to be cute? And from that reaction right there, I'm up, my hand stays right here. Because if it's a fucked up reaction, the hand, the salami comes right up <laughs> and smacks him. Salami. And right there, when you're telling somebody that, when they don't expect to see it, their body is, they don't even know what the fuck's going on. Because that's how I was raised. I talked to you. Yeah. When, when you told me about that, when I got the call from Red Band that you were drinking, I called you like a man. I said, you're my brother. I don't care how you live your life, but you can't do that here. Yeah. You can't drink and drive here. It's 2013. How retarded are you? You get a DUI. Right. Do I smack you now, or do I throw you under the fucking jail and stick ten black dicks up your ass? I wish I had like a like a fucking uh, spitball Yeah. that connected big black dead dicks <laughs> that they shot. a great idea. And you just shot them at people. And a dick would come at him and just fucking hit him in the face. I love it. We got to fucking get an inventor out there on Twitter. Now, we got like big black dicks to shoot him at people. I'm sorry. Where, where was your father? My father died when I was three. Shit. So you basically orphaned by I the age of 15. I orphaned 15. And after that, I had no parental, oh. no parental. Who? I ran my own shit. You're I, kidding. So nobody raised you. I moved in with a friend's family. I stayed there for a year Charlie. and a half. And I moved in for another friend's family. stayed there for a year and a half. And that was it. Once uh, I've been a, a nomad since September of '82, I have been solo, and I was 18 years old. Jesus. Paying my own bills, no clothes, apartment, shoes. I got a little help, and everything else I robbed. I, I got jobs to fill in the fucking gaps. Mm -hmm. But you know, this was a and God threw me a fucking bone and threw comedy in my life. Something you know, when you have nothing to lose, you gotta try everything. Yes. Got nothing to lose, guys. Got to try everything. Well, who the fuck are you? You know. So I got and hustle. This. You hustled. It sounds like you learned how to hustle and care for yourself very well, quickly. Is, you you know, do what you got to do, yeah, right? Yeah. If you're not hustling, you're done. You're I gonna know. Die. I know. And in today's society, you got to hustle. There's no jobs. There's no jobs. We're gonna sit at no. home and go. There's no job. Nah. You got to go out there and put two and two together. You got to invent the combination. You know. You got to buy those wipes from. Uh, you got to invent the black dick. Uh, paper. No, you That's gotta get the Dollar right. Shave Club. Oh, you gotta get Dollar Shave. Of Charlie's. Get those those are great. Have you used them? What? They're yeah. Uh, they're like a Did nice. You use them on your vagina or on no, your asshole? No, on my asshole. Now here's my problem. Maybe you guys can help me with it. When I take a shit, not all the time, but a lot of the times now, I have to go straight to the shower after the shit because there's so much cleanup. Tremendous. Like it's a never-ending wipe, and sometimes I wipe, and then later on the day I'll go back, and they're still brown there. And I don't know, like, what's wrong with my butthole? That happens to me. And you get it. Your <laughs> yeah. asshole gets itchy as yeah. fuck. Yeah. It always happens to me right before I go to bed. Oh. oh. And then I jump in the shower. Oh. Today, I had, today I had an itchy asshole like a motherfucker. I got to sneak into the bathroom, <laughs> pull my pants oh, down, sorry. get toilet paper, oh. stick toilet paper on my ass, and the big brown spots on the toilet paper. I'm 50 oh. fucking years old. That's why I have the warm-up Charlie's. I keep it on it top of the toilet. No, when I warm up. Yeah. I wipe my ass, and then yeah. I dry it with the fucking whatever, and you stick that finger deep in there, you get the barnacles. You're beautiful. You're brand new. Wow, it's like your shit don't stop. And like it leaks. I know. The heat makes the and once it's hot out and that shit touches your asshole with that salty sweat. Yeah. Oh Leaky reminds butt. me of roots. When they're <laughs> fucking in the boat yeah. sweating and dying and smelling. Right. You know, cause an asshole with salt on it and fucking sweat, you know, that sweaty salt. Yeah. Plus the fucking shit. The shit burns. Like oh, yeah. So that's that's no. why every time I'm sorry like, about this people, but let's discuss it. That's why every time you're like you you have to lick a girl's asshole, you have to let a girl lick your asshole, I'm like that. 
It no, can never no, be no, ever no. clean enough. No, well, but I'm not going to tell a girl to lick my ass over like I got a penis. No. I go on to like, guess what they had in Nobody's Vegas licking your guys' asshole. Wait, 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 guess, what, guess what was that? Vegas this week on my Who? hotel room. What? A fucking bidet. I love, I want and a bidet, I, I want it. one. I used it right away. Let me tell you something. <laughs> That's right bad. I'm going to get a bidet company to fucking sponsor the podcast because I could sell those. If somebody me installs too. them for nine ninety five plus a plumber, oh, yeah. you guys have no idea the difference of a day with that. They're doing it over in Japan where you take the shit and it washes your ass automatically that's great. before the shit even hits the water. Mm. You know, and that's what it is. A thousand little guns with water. This oh. was a war. And I, I had a bidet in Jersey mm. in my mother's house. In that house, yeah. we had a bidet. And I would take a shit and turn the bidet on. But if mm-hmm. you turn it on too fast, it, it hits you in the up face. Too fat, yeah. <laughs> now, does your wife... Uh, is she aware of your bowel movements and your, like, do you, do you have an open door policy when you take a shit or is it closed door? <laughs> I don't want nobody in the bathroom <laughs> watching me shit or smelling that night, man. I can imagine. I don't want to smell nobody's shit. I don't mind, smell, like, walking by and going, Christine, Yeah. you fuck that motherfucker up. Right. You know, I don't mind giving somebody credit where credit is due, but Thank I'm not going to go down and brush my teeth and comb my hair and then yell out and go, it smells like shit in there. Well, you went in there. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with you? You don't see me going in there. I'll put you, before you. If you're going to take a shit, let me know. That's the deal. I you. do that, yeah. If you're going to take a shit, let me know so I can get everything. I just in case I got to take a jump in the shower. I don't want to walk in there. But there's a lot of times she jumps in the shower at 8.30. And from 8.40 to about 8.52, that's my prime ass. <laughs> that's time? Up. That's Always. coffee. That's coffee. That's yes, the fruit. And that's yes. the breakfast. After that piece of wheat bread, my ass will sing in Jack. Mm-hmm. Like a doctor. Mm-hmm. And I go in that and I fuck it up. And I like when it just falls out. Like, it's like limbs. Yeah. Like, it's like <laughs> arms falling out of your asshole. And you can hear them hitting the bah, bah. And I like when they, like, you fill it up. And then it hits the metal. And it just sits there like 18 Vietnamese vets laying on top <laughs> of each other. Uh-huh. And the shit all mm-hmm. over, like, going this way and crossway. Then you flush it. And the shit don't go down. So you got to get toilet paper and push it down. <laughs> Nope, not my experience. I, I can't even imagine the dumps you take. Oh my god! Are they as are they bigger than your head? I can't. I it, what do sometimes you think? I look at them and I, I like I'll count out four feet of shit. <laughs> really? In twelve inch intervals? No. I took four a picture. Of those? I took one. How big was the question mark? Oh god! <laughs> you tweeted that, that one on Twitter. I saw that, that, that one. That I think be, I congratulated that you. That had to be thirty inches. That yes. monster. Wow. And, <laughs> And before that, it was like a 12-inch <laughs> and an 18 inch that I flushed, yeah. wiped a little bit, and then sat back down. And when that one came in, I was like, damn, what the fuck have I been eating? Now, do you fart in front of your wife? Oh, yeah. And she <laughs> farts in front of me, too. Good. I'll That's fart anyway. real love. I don't give a fuck. I was farting up on the plane back from uh, Vegas last weekend. <laughs> and, some, and the plane was empty, but right yeah. away, these douchebags want to sit around. So, all right, I'll give it to you. <laughs> I'll give it to you. <laughs> plane farts are the best oh because the sound of the engine camouflages anything. And it, it could be anybody. It could it be could you. It could be the, I the girl next to you who farted. Who knows? The best person I've ever killed with <laughs> farts on a plane is Joe Rogan. I have destroyed him to the point where I've, wake up, I've woken him up like, and he's looked at me like half asleep like, dog, what the fuck is that? And he'll put his shirt on. Yeah. He wrote a blog about one time where I yeah. fought on a plane. And he goes, he awoke to the smell while, while Antonio Banderas was teaching black kids how to dance. I fucking like my ass off. I've woken uh, him up from fucking, uh, wow. because we got to catch that 6 a.m. flight. I got two breakfasts in me already. By 8.30, my asshole's on fire. My bad. And I'm not big for taking a shit. Let me ask you this, bro. Go ahead. Not to change the subject. So you go into a town. Mm-hmm. You go to San Francisco. You get there Thursday. Mm-hmm. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. You come back Sunday morning. Mm-hmm. Now, while you're in San Francisco, you shit, correct? Mm-hmm. Oh, you yeah. You shit once. You shit twice. Mm. But as soon as... Like, this is my thing. Like, yeah. I'll shit. Like, I shit in Vegas this week. I was there... A day and a half, I shit two times, three yeah. times. When I take a shower, when I come home, unpack, throw my clothes in the hamper, put the suitcase away, put up the sleep apnea machine. When I'm putting the sleep apnea machine, like my stomach is already hurting. I do the mm. same thing every time I come home. That's why I don't take auditions after a flight, nothing. You can't. It's You're not going to work for me. You're just wrecked. It's not going to work for me. Yeah. I do the same thing. I walk in my room, my wife knows. I go in my room, I take the clothes out, put the suitcase away, I get naked. I go on the computer, make sure there's no late stuff. Then I get naked and I take a shit Mm. that even let's say I wake up that morning, it's like my asshole holds it back. Mm. It's like in these hotel rooms, my asshole thinks it's being watched. Mm. So he just drops like an 18 inch here, 
a 14 inch of there, a 10 <laughs> here. I'll yeah. drop a couple threes, but that's it. But when I get home, my ass knows it it's knows. home. Yeah. So I will take a shit that is so 40, 50 inches. Mm. And that's the one mm. that baffles me because I'm like, my intestines have been holding back. It feels like they've been cheating you. But she, and it even yeah. comes out. It even comes out still. Yeah. Like a lasso. It comes out like with the <laughs> intestine thing carved into them. It's disgusting. Really. Now, I have the opposite experience. When I'm in the hotel rooms, I find myself being freer. I shit more. It's road ass, too, because I'll make bad decisions with my food. That's when I eat the nachos and the stuff, and then I really shit. Oh, no, no. I'm good on the road. I, I no. eat the apples from the lobby and shit. I'm a yeah, fucking savage. Yeah. Gotta eat those apples. Those apples are pulling right through you. Let me read from our sponsors real quick. Sure. These shit stories are very interesting. We should get together more <laughs> often <laughs> and just do a fucking complete anatomy of, you know. I things. love talking about this stuff. I don't know why. I, I just And like I've it. had three it's or fun. four women eat my asshole. That's not. Well, I've picked up my fucking ankles, <laughs> and no. I've heard them lap that motherfucker. No. <laughs> no. Uh, there was this one chick I used to give a coke rock to, and I would grab her by the front of her hair and go go under, and I just <laughs> put her under, and she no. would lick it, and she would lick my no. ball sack, and I would fucking hit her in the top of my head with a dick, and she would sniff my helmet, oh my and lick god. it. Oh my god! It was These a women party, were animals, and it was disgusting. <laughs> the first time she ate my ass, she oh. actually told me to turn around, and I was like, <laughs> not. <laughs> in a million fucking years. Tell me what's on your mind. She's like, I like eating guys' assholes. Oh my god. So let me go wash it and I washed my ass. I, I took I washed everything. I took a shower. You just don't yeah. go in the bathroom and wash your ass and come out. And she I couldn't believe it. That's the first time somebody did it to me. Well you washed it. I didn't know that you were washing beforehand. So that's fine. Yeah, I'm very decent. That's fine. No, I, I, wa- I didn't know if you would go like all day and then at the end of the day no, like no. that's fucking cool. I won't even that's stab cool. my wife. If I'm not clean completely, I gotta take a shower. I'm the same way. And I gotta watch her take a shower. Like <laughs> you gotta watch. Sometimes her. I'll tell her, "Don't wash your monkey tonight. I want that original." Oh my! I want that Get original. Get your life, I Joey. I don't Diaz. want the crispy. I want the original. You like uh, oh, original flavors? Yeah. yeah <laughs> like a that. one day of flavoring, or do you like how a much hours, flavor? A, more, a night. Like let's say you wash your pussy at ten at night. You go to bed. Okay. It's perfect. At about 6.30, if you got a nice woman, her pH balance is good. <laughs> that pussy is perfect at fucking 6.30. You just take that thong off, open it up, and it's ready for you. It's got a little mist on it, a little dew. <laughs> no problem. You snip that motherfucker out of here. Unbelievable. I've known you for three years. The fact that you said and no pH balance. Like I've ne- hey, I would he's a never. Who the fuck do you think you're dealing with? Yeah. Do you think you're dealing with some fucking kid at the deli with a hat with a propeller on top? <laughs> oh my god! You had mad fucking flavor here, dog. Did you, but you didn't wash your ass every time she ate. Every her. fucking time. Oh. That's disgusting. That's a gentleman. That's still not you clean should be enough. washing your ass three times a day, just in case you bump into <laughs> somebody who wants to eat your ass. What if you walk out right now? There's a chick that's hot and out. She goes, "Are you busy right now? <laughs> For twenty bucks, I will swallow your. Fu- I will take every pubic hair out of your asshole <laughs> and suck each pore out. That's how much I roll. What would you do? No, I'm not. No, you're gonna you're gonna go fuck. <laughs> you're gonna be embarrassed. You're a decent Jewish kid. You're not going to say, suck my ass. I haven't showered since the fucking... Did you shower after the gym today? Yes. Okay. Cause you yeah, we shower. got it. Because yeah. that fucking ass mixes with the sweat. It's a different dimension. I, right. can't, I can't even imagine what your butthole is like, Listen Joey. to me. I, I wash I, I myself to before I go to the gym. Okay. That's how decent I am. I take a shower before I go okay. to jiu-jitsu. I don't ever want to, uh, I don't ever want to insult somebody with my body odor. Your breath, your fucking ears, <laughs> you, there's nothing you can do. You know what I'm saying? I want the same respect towards me. You know, you, you yeah. brush your teeth, you use the Listerine, you do the best you can. You're still going to have nicotine or whatever the fuck you smoke, reefer, or some ass on your breath. Yeah. But, you know, you got to respect your body and respect other fucking people. I know I, I can't have you coming into my airspace smelling like a fucking goat. God, you're just, just tell fucking you? offensive. You're offending everybody, man. Tommy and I were in TGI Fridays in Hartford, Connecticut this week, and the waitress had the worst B.O. of anybody I'd ever smelled. She would walk away, and then it was like a three-second countdown, and then it would just hit us. And oh. I was eating some broccoli cheddar soup, and I was like, oh, I couldn't even finish it. It was disgusting. My, the theory, I think it was the, the uniform was old. You know, maybe you should have watched it. Was TGIF. That broccoli yeah. cheese soup might have been old. That's, uh, <laughs> don't blame it on the waitress. I'm a fat dude, and I know at times. But you don't smell. When I was doing blow, I had a little wang to me. I didn't notice it till the end. You get little pockets in your fat. Uh, That's where some heavy duty stuff. She was skinny. Skinny young girl. 
Oh, yeah. No, Pretty. No, but, you know, these fucking Gentiles, they're animals. Yeah. They want to save on soap and shit. That's you gotta true. Wash you wash your pussy. You got to wash. If you're a woman, you got to wash. You got to wash your you gotta pussy. Wash that and you got to. Listen, I like a pussy when a girl runs, like, like yeah. a little sweaty monkey. Like, there used to be a girl in the YMCA that would work out with no undies on because you would see the clit fucking get wet. Like, you would see the stripe <laughs> of my pussy from the inside. She would sweat from the inside. And her armpits, she was beautiful. And she had long hair in her armpits. Aww. She didn't shave her armpits. That's disgusting. I don't know, <laughs> I don't know if she wore deodorant or not, but I saw the <laughs> pussy sweating. Wow. And that turned me on. That turned me on. I sat there like fucking drooling. Like I like to taste that mo- with some hair. Like it's got to have hair. Are you classic flavors like that? Like yeah, you I like want it to hair? have a little hair. The hair gives it the... The Greek salad. Effect. <laughs> Gives it that fucking. Uh, you wish it smelled like an onion. It smells like that onion. I yeah. like that little light a little onion. Tanked. But just a little light onion. Once it gets too oniony, <laughs> right above the clit with a mat where it looks like a fucking pug's head. <laughs> you know, right there where sometimes it looks like a what's that dog that's got a wrinkled forehead? A pug. If, a she's, pug. Got, if she's got a good clit. It, it squishes up like you know, it's been punched. It's, this is like listening to seventh grade boys. This is the <laughs> best. This is just like junior high school. Uh, I like nuts when they're clean. I love when Tommy has fresh, sure. meat, Who wants fresh dirty nuts, nuts. Are the best. Sure, sure. Fresh junk. You know we're family here. Yeah. yeah, go ahead. I did something yesterday morning. I got up, took a shower, I ate breakfast, and I did something. Oh, I did I, I walk with the baby, and when I got back, it was hot. So before acupuncture, I said, let me take a fucking shower. That's the least I could do for Doc Damon. That's my Jew girl. I take a shower, I put the coconut uh, mm. the scrub so you smell like something. You know, you gotta take off your shirt. I like that too. I go and I took the shirt off. When I got there, it was 2 o'clock. Last night was 11.30, quarter to 12. I was drinking coffee, I was right. I go, you know what? I took a shower at 1. I'm gonna take a. I took a shower at 1, it's 11.30, quarter to 12. I'm not gonna hit the bed dirty. Yeah. And I took my clothes off, took my t shirt off, and I walked to the shower naked with my little flip flops on and shit, you know? And when I got to the shower, I had an itch in my nutsack, and mm. I picked my leg up, and what I felt mm. wasn't sweat, it's that, mm. that, uh, it's like spam, the spray mm. shit mixed with like, uh-huh. it was thick, and I remember like, I grabbed some of it, and I even smelled, and it was tremendous, I mean, mm. for me, it was, it had that mm. man, it smelled like bacon when it's, <laughs> uh, when it's boar, <laughs> you ever get bacon, but it's really mm. boar, mm. that's what, and I was like, <laughs> fucking 10 hours without taking a shower and not exercise. Yeah. And this is what came out of my nutsack. My asshole was clean. That was shiny, sparkle. I hadn't taken a shit. My asshole was MIA. Yeah. There was nothing there but just this crevice right here. Sure. It was like I could feel the oh, humidity. God. Like a sack of... <laughs> oh, God. I could have put it on a pan and they could have oh cooked an egg God. on it. Nobody would have known. Oh, my you God. You would have ate a I'm ball gonna, sack I'm fucking like egg. You're eating eggs at your house. I tell you, I don't get skeeved out easily. That, <laughs> that, you want that, the truth. That was fun. But no, 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 no. But Oof. I don't understand. What, what if I would have taken Oof. a shower from 8 in the morning? Now, most of these fucking babooshes walk around. Yeah. Because most of these fucking Gentiles leave the house at 7. Yeah. And they'll go home, not take a shower, go to jiu-jitsu with that rotten ass. And then go home and go to a bar and talk to women and expect why they don't get laid. I can't get it. Well, maybe because you fucking smell like a no. fucking animal. Yeah. Did your wife ever see these smells or experience the smells of mm-hmm. your balls you were just talking yeah, about? If my balls smell, I don't want mm. my wife around them. I Good for the you. I appreciate that respect. No, I love my wife. Good for you. And Good I like when she has, like, I don't want to say a dirty pussy, mm. but I like when it's got some wine. Little musk. Little musk. Not mm. wrong. How do you like that monkey, Lee? I just got in, like, like, when I was younger, it had to be totally shaven, but recently I don't mind it as much. You like a lot of hair? Not a lot. Uh, like it's Just not a like little bit like a patch. Do you ever smell the patch? It doesn't have to be. Like, it can be all over, but, it, like, it's not too, like, bushy. What do you mean all over? Like, she's like, got leprosy and somebody pulled the no, hair? No, no. Like, it could be, like, it's not like, just a it's patch. Gotta be in a condi- it's got to be in a, in a circle. Like not always. Patch up here right? No, no, no. But, like, I'm saying there's a patch, right. and then there's when they just, like, they oh, like what know. I do, what I just trim it. So you like, like that. you like the patch? I like everything now. It doesn't you matter. S- do you sniff the patch of it? Just put your nose in it. No, you'll ask me. I've never sniffed it. No. I mean, I smell yes, it, but it's... Have. How deep do you smell it? I mean, how deep is your love? I don't know. You how deep there? is your love? Is your love so Of your deep. snatch, smell it. I mean, that mo- or you just smell the aroma and lick it and don't smell it. No, when I mean, you're licking it, you got to smell yeah, it. Yeah, you smell it, yeah. but I don't, I don't go in there just for the purpose of smelling it. Like, it sounds like you get in there like you're like a wine connoisseur and like take when a deep you, when breath. When you eat a steak... 
Yeah. Don't you smell? Don't doesn't that allure your taste taste buds first? Time to time? I, I might, must have been doing it wrong. That's yeah. the whole thing. When you get into that fucking monkey, <laughs> about right before you lick it, you hesitate. Your neck hesitates, <laughs> and you don't go like a fucking asshole and embarrass her. <laughs> it's like a soft. <laughs> 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 it goes in your mouth this is and your so nose. It's ridiculous. It does. It goes in your nose and your mouth. You just do, and you don't even do that. That's too loud. <laughs> and you'll feel that's it. So and right in your nose. Like your baseball player smelling the dirt, or like like that's what. Like that, and you know, and then you get in there and you're licking it and you're smelling different situations. You know what I'm saying? You're smelling the belly button. I like all that shit. You are so fucking bizarre. I love what it. What the fuck? This is what you. Well, you brought it out. And we, we don't talk about Listen, this. Listen, if you want to be, if, if you want to be fucking good, you gotta be bad. You're not gonna eat a girl's pussy. Stay at mate missionary. She's not gonna call you again. That's so true. You gotta get true. in there, and pick that leg up, and eat that fucking ass, and tell her to flip over and pull her by the wigwam. And <laughs> let me get another soda leaf. You don't mind my brother water, whatever you got over there. We gotta. Jesus. Let me give a shout. Sorry, out. you have to do your your read. Sorry, I, I, I derailed no, no, it. No worries, it. You know my fucking reads. I derailed it. I derailed it. It's Wednesday night. Why fuck around? If I tell you once, I got to tell you again. On it. For all your... Supplements. Needs. But what I want to say is they're more than a fucking supplement. They're a way of life. They're a lifestyle. They're tremendous. They get the most out of you. Don't fuck around. Look at me. I'm a fucking savage. I'm a fat fuck. But <laughs> On it has done a lot of good for me. The Alpha brand is tremendous. The Shroom Tech is tremendous. The mm. fucking Strong Bone is tremendous. In fact, I'm going to go home. I'm going to hit my fan, my buddy up down there to send me some more product. I'm running low. Why fuck around? Be the best you can be. Take a chance. Columbus did. All right? <laughs> Just fucking on it, right? Take Just a fuck. chance. Columbus did. Right? What would, what would we be if your Columbus Your brain. Did? Take I a love chance. your mind. Where would we be if Columbus You're sat right. there like a mortal playing video games? <laughs> nowhere. Know. We'd be nowhere. We'd be getting like fucked on the ass by Indians. <laughs> with fucking long feathers. <laughs> on it. Yeah. Go to on it page and press. Church. C-H-U-R-C-H. Get 10% off your order and get... Getting 10% off, get put on the list, get on the stay on it program. I'm not fucking around. This is optimum, optimum, optimization we're talking about. I'm a little fucked up, but <laughs> I know what I'm talking about. You understand me? Oh, I'm going to try want, it. I like this. Yeah, you want the best out of you? Go to fucking uh, on it, on it.com and look at uh, Alpha Brain. If you don't fucking like it, send it back. We'll send you your money back. That's how on it's not here to steal your fucking money. We're not some fly by night vitamin company. They ain't fucking around. They're down there in Austin making things happen. Look at that. Look at that page. Read what they got to offer. If I told you what they got to offer, I'd just sound fucking stupid. It's not my world. Go to onit.com. Read what they got to offer. The things I recommend, Alpha Brain. Tremendous if you want to run on all cylinders. If you're waking up and people tell you you're fucking stupid, Alpha Brain won't help you. You're fucking stupid. <laughs> but if you're having a bad day and you can't think, Alpha Brain is for you. If you don't like it, you send it back and you get your fucking Gita's back. All right? One, two, three. One time you can do it. You didn't have to send the product back. My uh, next fucking thing that even my girl was asking me about. There's nothing better than Nature Box out there. If you're trying to get healthy and you want to eat nutritious snacks late, late night or at work, you have to spend money in the fucking fending machine. You're going to go down to 7-Eleven and deal with fucking Abdar. Those fucking, <laughs> those middle, those 7-Elevens are becoming fucking Arab concentration camps. <laughs> You're buying that fucking, those pizzas and shit. Those fucking oh, Hindus hot, with that fucking dog. pizza. Oh. Stop! Hindus don't make fucking pizza! Okay, stop it! You're insulting who the fuck I am now. You don't see me selling curry. Stop with the fucking pizza and the fucking chicken wings, cocksucker. Stick to what you know. Marlboro, <laughs> six pack of butter, and some fucking wine to fuck the fag that lives upstairs with the fucking ass, all right? I don't know what the time we got. We're talking about Nature Box, cocksucker. Naturebox.com. Nutritionist approved. The calories, protein. I love Nature Box. You understand me? I fucking love it. Let me tell you what they got here. Because I'm not giving you people fucking justice. And that's wrong. That's fucking wrong, all right? Let me put it this way, all right? Am I going to say something? Right? You ready for this? You should be snacking more. You need to be snacking more, all right? You even find snacks that are low in sugar, non-GMO, and they're gluten-free. And they ship for free. Did you know that? Sweet potato five, mm. sweet blueberry fucking almond. The white and black granola is tremendous. Listen, I wouldn't fuck with you. Naturebox.com, naturebox promo code Joey. That's naturebox.com. Promo code Joey. Stay full. Stay fucking strong. You want your dick to work. If you're sitting there like a Momo eating fucking potato chips, it's going to over ruin your liver. And that's, it's over for you. What I'm trying to say is go to naturebox.com, promo code Joey, and stay strong, stay full. And you know what? I'm going to give you 50% off your first month's order. Who does that for you? 
You think I was just going to give you a promo code and that's it and let you go away? 50% off. Who gives you 50% off, cocksuckers? Who? Tell me who. Nobody. You understand me? I do the same with Hulu Plus. They're giving you $7.99 a month on a fucking commercial. What do I give? I give an extra two fucking weeks. When was the last time you met somebody who sucked your asshole for two weeks and then charged you two That's weeks later? That's right, Joey. Nobody does that in this economy no more. It's cold out there for a pen. Even though you're trying to get the money for the rent. You know what I'm saying? Also, for you vapor smokers who have vapor pens and you want to try it and fucking be different, you want to hang out with your buddies and be a jack-off, <laughs> nail, <laughs> nail, nail the... <laughs> NailedItLife.com oh. They're my buddies Peter and oh. David I love these motherfuckers With all my heart They got the best Fucking pen out there In the market They don't fuck around They'll mail it to you <laughs> Mention us And you get 20% Off your first order What's the webpage NailedItLife.com NailedItLife.com <laughs> Call the 800 number uh, David and fucking Peter there They'll answer the fuck to you <laughs> They know shit you know? <laughs> They got all the answers They got all Them the fucking Jeremy answers the Cop answers. suckers so I don't know if you live in the area. I don't know what the fuck you're doing this weekend. My main girl here, I, I'm so happy you came in. Thank you for having me. We're not me. wrapping up yet. I'm just trying to get oh, all this okay. shit. She's going to be in Ontario Improv with her husband. Oh, and Listen, it's oh, the man, best fucking 22 fucking dollars you ever you're spent in your life. Us. You understand me? 22 fucking dollars. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. What's the number down in Ontario? 909-666-6666. That's 909-582-6666. Two three six one. That's nine zero nine four eight four fifty four eleven. There you go. All right. And what is it? Nine eight nine four eight four five four one one. Also, guys, if you're in the Pasadena area, come see me August 9th at the Ice House. I'm doing the side room two shows, seven thirty and nine thirty. Come out. Don't you know fuck why? around. These it's are the same people you guys love. But don't fuck around. All right. <laughs> She's doing two shows, seven thirty and nine thirty on a Saturday or Friday uh, night. No, that's a Saturday night. Saturday in night. The small room. And the reason I like. It's because you can really let your nuts hang. I'm going to say some real shit. It's going to get fucking weird because I like it that way. So come and watch some real shit happen. It's like 180 people and you can have a party yeah, in there for two the shows. Best. Come on down. $22. They got great food. Pasadena, the whole area got great food. Yeah, it's good. Get some fucking tickets. Get some sushi. Take your wife or your girlfriend or your fucking lover over to the ice house. Laugh with my girl. 626-577-1894. Again, 626-577-1894. That's the number to the ice house. Call him up right now. I ain't fucking around. Joe Rogan's up there right now. Call him up. Leave him a message. Oh, that's right. My husband's <laughs> doing his show tonight. They're doing everybody's up there. Burke Price and me. I got, okay. I got bigger locations. I got... I'm going to, <laughs> Fuck these bitches. You okay. know what I'm saying? Gotta go to what else you want to tell me? It was a pleasure having you on Thank you so much. To, how long have we been trying to get this dirty bitch on? <laughs> <laughs> a while. You've always mentioned it. That you call her and then you're out of, well, town, out of town. Well, and Joey used to, you used to be like, call, I'll call you at 6 a.m. And we'll do that. And I'm like, ah, it's like, ah. <laughs> what, what happened to your 6 a.m. phone Monday. calls? Monday. 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 Okay. What happened was I was doing all this working on and I wasn't losing no weight. Me and my mm. wife were like baffled. There's got to be another problem. And then I sent them my card. I have a sleep apnea machine, and you have mm. to send it to this computer. And every month, every 90 days, you send it in. Mm. And the guy called me. He goes, hey, man, you're going to fucking die. Mm. Do you sleep only with the machine, or do you sleep on the couch half the night? And I go, no, I sleep with the machine. Why? He goes, you ain't sleeping. You're averaging 4.8 hours or something to sleep. Oh, night. shit. Yeah. He goes, you got to knock it off. So it's good that I do the Wednesday night one. Plus, I get guests that come in. It's much easier it's with traffic. And um, what did I say to you? What was the other question? I don't even know. So I do that one Monday at 6 to get people jumping. People have weird weekends. They probably ate a bad dose of pussy. They need <laughs> yeah. a little kick in the ass yeah. on Monday. And that's what I'm here to do, give you a little kick in the ass, reinforce you, let you know it's a cruel world out there. you got to wash your pussy. you yeah. got to be prepared. If you want to get your dick sucked, you got to be prepared. You can't go out there unprepared. Nobody will suck your dick. That's so true. So Monday, 6 a.m., and then Wednesdays, I like to do 8 o'clock. And I miss jujitsu and I miss spots. But I want to give you the best possible podcast like tonight. I had her in here and I can really tap into on the phone. We fuck around. It's topical, but they got to go up to 20 minutes, you know. Yeah. The I husband wants that. to fuck her. Oh, all the time. In the morning. All you know, day, so every day. What's up with you, cocksucker? What are you doing this weekend? This weekend? I don't know. Uh, there's a fight Saturday, which would be good. Who's fighting? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Matt Brown. Um, yeah, that's. I'm just excited for next Wednesday. So yeah, that's why we got the podcast at the Ice House. Right. Oh, that's always so much Ms. fun. Miss Pat, live podcast with motherfucking Miss Pat. We got women. We, we I'm I a woman it. guy. I, I jizz with women. I have a great relationship you with a lot do. of these women. So uh, I like them to come on and we talk and I talk crazy, but they know at the end of the day I love them and I of respect course. them. Of course. You do, mind. Joey. You're the sweetest one. I Thank love you, you the most. Thank you, Boo Boo. Thank you, Boo Boo. I always, I love I'm you, a big Joey. fan of, I think you're sexy. 
Thank you, Jerry. And you have a podcast. Yes. Oh, your mom's house, guys. Listen up. We're going to have uh, this Friday, Gretchen Bonaducci is a guest on that episode. And uh, she talks about, she's writing a book about Danny Bonaducci. I don't know if you ever watched Breaking Bonaducci in 2005. It's a crazy fucking reality show. Uh, so, yeah, listen to that. We were just in Vice Magazine, too, or online or whatever, Vice. And uh, it's good. It's a fun show. We talk about shitting a lot, if yeah. you like that. M- m- a lot of brown talk. I told Tom when he did the live one, but I said it on here, too. Like, you're, like I think between you and Ari, it's my favorite, two favorite podcasts. Aw, thank you. Always, you. He always uh, talks highly. Ari's great. Oh, yeah. Thank you. You're very smart. sweet to say that. Thank you. No, it's just a lot of the shows have gotten to be, like, interview shows, and it's just... Because I see it's hard. It's not hard, but it's different when it's only Joey and me. Yeah. And most of the guys, most of the time, your show is just you and him. And it's it's like one of the only podcasts where you really have to have listened for the whole time. Yeah, good. Because you know, like there's so many running gags, and it's just it's a I don't know. I've I list I've started a while ago. I missed the beginning of it, but the very very beginning. Yeah. yeah. I don't even know where those are. When we were with Death Squad, we started with Death Squad. Yeah, I, I got you right at the end of that. Oh well, hey, I'm glad you're here. <laughs> it was fun. No, Thanks it's for a great show. You guys. Thank you. I love you guys. Love you going to you wash too. your assholes now? Yeah, I got to go do a set, but I love you, cocksuckers. Stay black. Have a great Stay weekend. Black. We'll see you Monday at 6 a.m., you bad motherfuckers. <laughs> and uh, JoeyDiaz.net for fucking tour dates. Where am I this weekend? Reno, and yeah. that's it. I ain't seen you motherfuckers till Brea, September oh, good. 18th, and then I'm in New York the 26th and the 27th of September. I'm taking August off. Completely. Good for you. Done. I'm relaxed. I'm going to Kentucky with my family. Mm. I'll be in Paducah doing a show at a fucking coffee house, believe it or not. Holy fuck. So I'll let you Do motherfuckers it. know. That's how I roll. Now that the show's over, remember to go to naturebox.com. What music are you going to put on? Because you already put the other thing on. So oh, okay. You fuck this up. Well, well, you said where's the music, and we have two songs lined up. I don't know. Um, oh, I'll do this one because I'm sure both of you hate it. <laughs> I uh, have a feeling I know what it's going to be. Yeah. I don't even know who sings that piece of shit song. Which one? You know what he's going to play. I don't know. The boys are back in town. Oh, no, no, no. no oh, okay. I... That's the worst, bro. Bro.